What's cracking? It's your homie, Lil Mystery. You are now listening to the Emo Brown Podcast, the downest fool in Chula Vista since AC Slainer, homie. You're listening to Magrito Podcast Network, celebrating the culture of Chicanos and Latinos one story and voice at a time. Connect on social, on Instagram and Facebook, at Magrito. Find all the Magrito Podcast Network shows over at magrito.net. Ladies and gentlemen and low lives, thank you for checking in to another episode of Emo Brown, the podcast on a Tuesday. Because some of us were out to sea over the weekend and just got back. El, el ya gusto? El ya gusto. The sea man has returned. Brought to you by Grasshopper for your medicinal cannabis needs, recreational even. Mm. Hit up ghbuds.com, take your ass over to Grasshopper, make that card clack, get 15% back. Their beer is coming. Their beer is coming. The Emo Brown pre-roll has came. Ooh, it's here. It's already here. We got BJ smoking. We got Caesar Ooh. smoking. Chef's not here, so we're going to get X-rated today. Yeah. Oh, my God, bro. No, Ready. We're, we're keeping the gangster. We're keeping the gangster. It's a good day. Yeah. Doing Metiche Martes, because, you know, like I said, I was out of town yesterday. Over the weekend, I was gone. But before, on, we get lost in that, but before we get into that, let's, let, let's talk a little bit about when you get an opportunity. Make sure to rate, review, subscribe. Mm. Emo Brown, the podcast, Spotify. That's our move right now, right, Casas? Spotify? Fuck Apple? We're not, we don't fuck with Apple no more? We fuck with Apple. All right, Audio cool. only on oh, Apple, yeah. though, right? Yeah. Spotify Audio got that. Is All right, cool. Can I'm glad we get. I'm glad we get Casas a mic so he can talk to me in yes. sign language. That's that's awesome. We are <laughs> on Spotify. We are on Pinchi uh, <laughs> Apple. Uh, we're not on all of the platforms yet. We're not on Stitcher. Uh, no, not yet because Pinchi Casa switched everything. Dog, mm. he went in and he switched everything. Stop all for about. the better of the good. Mm. You want to see our beauty faces? Go on Spotify. It'll be up on there in a few hours. You want to see them right now? We're live everywhere, apparently. Yeah. We're live everywhere. Twitch, YouTube. They don't call X-tube. Casas the God for nothing, bro. Or do they? They call you Casas the God? All right. Let's get into the member reading right now, bro. You know what? Mm-hmm. Chef, Chefry Dahmer's not here. Ooh. So when Chef uh, Sandoval is not here, we read every name on the list. Cala, pinchi, nombre. I'm looking at myself in the camera. I look good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Surge One. Latest member of the group, welcome to the crew, Andy Mejia, Chris M, Christopher Martinez, uh, Mr. Mikey Roots, ooh, he might sell weed, Rambo and Saldovar, <laughs> Ruben Quinones. She's exposing everybody's <laughs> business, dog. That's why I wanted to read the names. Maddie Z, <laughs> Maddie Diesel, hey, big ups, Matt Diesel, he just won our pinchy, uh, not fantasy football, but like a, a baseball bracket, he had the Astros, really? he, he's white, he likes cheaters. Eddie Zuko, welcome, <laughs> Brenda Aguirre, Erlin Halan, the homie from Man City, Carlos Jimenez, Carlos Jimenez, you sent me a message, your card and your your shirt are here. The cards are here. New cards have arrived. Chicla okay. has them, but you know how he is. He's very protective of these things, bro. He's very protective. He's been meeting, missing a lot of meetings. We're going to have to have an intervention with him. It'll be all right. We're going to take care of that. Justin just tingled right there. Look at him. The that, cards the are I in. Word. The cards are in. The shirts are in. It's coming. David Lara. El Compa Greg. Paulina for the people. Where is she? She ain't here, huh? Kenya Nieves. Antonio Sanchez. La Compa Jess. Carlos Solorio. I met Carlos. I met Carlos Solorio. Carlos Solorio is one of the assistants to uh, super, uh, Supervisor Nora Vargas. So he okay. was in here taking video documentation, just like, you know, taking some photos, doing his thing. And he's Evidence. like, hey, bro, it's awesome to finally meet you. I, I, we big fans of the Emo Brown and everything you mm. guys do. Carlos Solorio, I'm a big fan of you. Damn, a little bit. The point of the a little bit. Uh, Jerry Goldman, congratulations on birthing a child. Yeah, not you, man. not you, but your wife. Well done to her. You, yeah. well, you did your job. You wore socks. Gabriela Ledesma, Rodrigo Aaron, right. yeah, Rodrigo Aaron Siria, Mary Ice, Javier Brito, alias El Flaco, Carly, Claudia Wusher, West Said, David Shapiro, Victor Almanzan, Tanya Torres. Tanya, Andrea Torres, Jorge Gonzalez, Etna Alvarez. Yo, what the fuck are you doing over there, Casas? Oh, no. Oh, shit. What, what you doing over there, bro? Right? Everyone got scared. Uh, Ivan Espinosa, <laughs> Jaime Jorge Cepeda, Jason McClure, <laughs> Camille Harrington, Shira. enjoy yourself in Jalisco, <laughs> Roberto Gomez, que pedo, compa, Alexandra Camacho, David D.B. Styles. David D.B. Styles writes in a manner that I cannot read. He, he, he made a, a graphic with all of the spots that uh, the Emo Brown Social Club card is. Uh, he made uh, hieroglyphics. 
which is a, in, in theory is a great idea. Whoever came up with the idea, Eric of the Breaker, mm. that was fucking rad. But <laughs> next time, let's, maybe here. let's have somebody do it in a way that we can actually read it. <laughs> I was looking at it. I was like, I don't, I'm going to post that shit too. Okay, I can read it. Clinton Jones, what's cracking? Brian Casey. Hey, Clinton Jones is a real estate agent and we have a realtor. All right. Oh, is there beef? We there? Have, there's no beef. But it's I'm gonna, small TV it's, it's, again? Feliz, yeah, we're going to sing for him, by the way. That's who I'm, we're oh, going to sing oh, to. Okay. Okay. Albert Aguirre's birthday. Clint Jones, a re- local real estate agent here in Chula Vista. Mm. But what he does that separates himself from other people is that he he's actually a broker. He is going to be uh, giving away uh, turkeys. Turkey, turkey yeah. giveaway. We're going to poach that idea, and we're going to give turkeys away here. I think we should buy 50 turkeys, Damn. but like a whole meal. You know, una pichi caja de, 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 de papas, una pichi caja de, de, de relleno, so stuffing, mashed potatoes, you know, all of that. Put it in a bag, and 50 families who are in need here in the community, I think on Metiche Monday of that week, we make it happen. Like, we open the doors up Metiche Monday, we set up these baggies with the turkey in there, and we just start giving them away, bro. We go American gangster style, get those, like, fur coats, too, and, like, Tommy guns and the shit. The fuck you want, Peter here, bro? What is wrong with you? Yes. Jesus Christ. Brian Casey, Marisol, <laughs> yes, guys, Ryan Starvarsh, Bradley Starvarsh. Star Wars! Erica Ortega, Tommy Ferris, Ariana Porras, Bernie, get cracking, Bernie, Unknown Soldier, Bianca, uh, Sarah Chula Mice, page two, that's on you, and I'm done. Will Holder, Bob Oso, Mr. Paul Segura himself, Mark Sanchez, the butt fumble, Timothy Gomez, Francisco Hernandez, El Compita, SDCA Equipment, What's Up, Jorge, Kula Yoga, Matthew, Stephen Ferris, Fuck you, Matt. Andrew Maison, Griselda Garcia. That's my mom. Hey, big ups to my mama for buying us. T- Dude, she she paid for the fucking trip, bro. We'll talk about we'll that. Talk, we'll talk about right. that. We'll pay. We'll talk about that. Amar Kampanajar. It's his day, right? Hey, did you talk about Will Holder already? Yeah, it was the first Hey, one. big ups, Will. Sometimes things in IB don't work out. Let's keep it going, though. <laughs> there <laughs> behind the bar. <laughs> Peter Dows, leave that out there. Rowdy pal. Hey, did you just, you just went over Amar Kampanajar? I said his big day today. Today is Amar's big day. Camera on me, please. Amar <laughs> Kampanajar's big day is today. He is uh, running for our local mayoral uh, vacancy. Him and uh, Ralph Wiggum. Ralph Wiggum is on there. <laughs> Who's Ralph Wiggum? Oh, I get it. That's a good one. I'm in danger. Good luck, guys. It's a. Uh, <laughs> it's been a long journey to get them to this level. We'll talk about our involvement and how we played a small part in the Chula Vista mayoral. Candidacy. Small part. Y'all, you're the puppet, man. Go ahead, brother. Stephanie Perez, Mr. Stoll, Eddie A. Eddie, a.k.a. Samson Simpson. To the loo on the Hold side. down, motherfucker. Oh, shit. Did they win or lose? No, they won. I don't watch them shits. They fucked up my parlay. I remember that. Jose Torres. Jose Carlos, Torres. Is that a promero? Yeah. Is that pro- Hey, what's up, Plumero? That's all I got. Good people right <laughs> what's there. Up? What's up? It's weird because I'm seeing all these names all over again because Chef forbid us to read the name. Wow. <laughs> you put an emphasis on the So now that Chefry Dahmer is gone, now that she's gone, I feel like I want to go in on everybody who's here. Let's go. Keep it going. Let's go. Renette Pulido. Sorry. You're Renette. Me. She's the host of a wonderful podca- podcast called okay. the okay. True Crime okay. Podcast, available on Emo Brown Media Worldwide. Roberto Cuero, Flores, El Fonzi, Shannon Lynette, Eman Hernandez, and motherfucking tattooed Jesus himself, Jay Ford, right there. I see him. Oh, oh shit. Richard Heck, Otter Stop Lowe's. I need a haircut. My barber's out of town. I'm going I to you, will. bro. Yeah, I'll see you next week. David Martinez, Sweet Aria, D. Ba, Danielet, my guy. David Baker, bro. We love you. El Pinguino Cortez, R. a deep relationship conversation with El Pinguino yesterday. It just Pinguino, we love you. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh-huh. Te amo. That's oh, all nice. I gotta say about that. Let's have a little say about that. <laughs> the homie RJ, man, are they going away swan song because they're focusing on the brick and mortar? Damn. Rice or Death has been a fixture on every other Sunday at Three Punk Ales for over a year. Right. You know, um, we were fortunate enough to host them and have them there. They brought all the delicacies, all the food. I like the spam rice, my, my personal favorite. Mm. I was out of town on this, their last Sunday at the brewery. Why? Because now they have a brick and mortar, and they're going to allocate all of their attention directly to the brick and mortar. North Pack. Good for them, man. That's a that's a fucking huge step. That's a that's a, a gigantic level to be unlocked. And, and the building they got is fucking. Gorgeous. We'll be there, dude. We're gonna go in there. We're gonna sit down with Uncle Tom, with You're fucking gonna go RJ, Damn, with Terry, with all those guys. And we're gonna do a podcast on the scene, live Ooh, and direct. You know, I love it for the South Bay Pillar project that we're doing for the grant. We're gonna, that's going to be Justin and me. We're going to go up and we're going to talk to him. Oh, room. did I just break some news? Yeah, some shit's coming. <laughs> Another level unlocked. <laughs> Everybody's Another insurance one. agent, Another Willie one. Ruiz. Happy anniversary, 10, ten years. 10-year anniversary that's for crazy. Willie Ruiz. He's that's been dope, he's been man. holding it down. Chula Vista's very own. He's taking me out to dinner this week. I'll accept. Oh, cool. Where are we going? Tony Maroquin, El Davi, Jose Uribe, Ernesto Quintero, Eric Navarro, Tony. Hey, Yusonia. that's Sonia. Where's the nurse, bro? I haven't seen this name in a minute. Where's the nurse? Is he yeah, good? It's like, it's like where's Waldo? He's good. Dog? All right. No, no cases currently. He's all right. All right. Cool. No Let's keep it going. Murder. 
<laughs> Sonia Serostop. <laughs> no wonder they don't want me to read the fucking names anymore. <laughs> seat five, Cesar Fernandez. Cesar Fernandez. I don't know how your fucking sign got on my yard, but well done, sir. Well I was, played. Bro, I was gone like for the weekend, and I showed up yesterday, and there's a You're voting Cesar for 14 Fernandez different people. For seat five. I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? All right, cool. I got you, bro. You're my All guy. Right. You're my guy. Did he put it in the clubhouse, or did he put it just in the yard? No, he put it in the yard, bro. Wow. Like, boom. And then the fire department came, and they put it on there. I was like, whatever, dog. Apparently, my house is just like Pee-wee's Playhouse now. Everybody's welcome. <laughs> I was a fire department at your house. We were just going to glaze over that? You burned the house down? <laughs> no, they were at the house dropping off signs, fool. Oh, Jesus. That's what they were doing. Is he, yeah. is, he, is, he, is he with us? I don't know, bro. I have Jose a, Fernandez Martin Casas, el doctor. What's up, guys? Dr. Mason, Casas. Inocentes. Sir Alex Rivera. Matthew Echavaria. Bro, up, it's uh, Echavaria, bro. <laughs> no, it's not now. Cool. You, must fucking go to, you must live in L.A. and have taquitos. What's up, dog? Uh, Theo Collins, and now on to this man. Homar Sanchez, Abby Halbron, Brian Vong. I'm not even going to stop. Long. Elias gonna, Delgado, Ru- Eric Luis. I'm going to wait till you pass Abby. up. Eric Ruiz, Maddie, Annie Wilker, Wilkis, Wilkis, mm-hmm. Bill Lukey. Annie Wilkes, who's that? Arcadio Mora. Who's Annie Wilkes? Uh, Annie, oh, you're okay. Annie Wilkes, that's Pinchy. Uh, Droopy, Droopy's back. Oh, okay. Droopy's back. Who's Annie Is Wilkes? It? Do we know that name? Annie Wilkes. Does that have something to do with a picture? It's like a little monkey? I don't know. That monkey's been there for a minute. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, I don't Bill, know. Bill Lukey, Arcadio Mo- Mora, Pablo Cacahuate, so president. Just keep, going, just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. <laughs> Rudy Avalos, Mike BB, Evelyn Bernardi, LJP, BB. Giovanni Correa, <laughs> Ben Bikes for Beers, Hexes, Felipe. I think you have to pause he's after JP to make sure that he's not offended every time you read his name. Yeah, JPZ. Break for respect. Pause for, si- for uh, silence. All right, keep it going. Let's go. Moment of silence. Beatrice Uribe, Chef Claudia, we miss you. Did you oh. talk about Maggie already? Yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. Keep going. Maggie Brennan, and, 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 and. <laughs> Justin Zaleska, Aaron Hill, Matt Lawson, Hector Mungia. Stop. Oh. Keep going. Erica the Breaker. <laughs> now Wait, did stop. she change her now name? Stop. Yeah, no, no, Erica the Breaker. Now we stop. Ladies and gentlemen, the official real estate agent of all things Emo Brown, Alberto Aguirre. Small Teeth, Big Bite, LLC. Boom. It was his birthday yesterday, and I feel it's appropriate to sing him a song. By all means, my white fellow, strum your guitar. <laughs> He's yours? This one's for you, small teeth. I didn't think those. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Albert Aguirre. You got the smallest teeth in the world. Show. Happy birthday. All right, keep Man. going, please. Oswaldo Perez, Kevin Lewis, Giovanni Sanchez. Oh, Kevin shoot, threw out his back. Up. Kevin threw out his back. What were you doing to him? He was carrying, carrying the three punk ales, bro. <laughs> Marino Gomez, Israel Castillo, Muskies. Is Senor in a Lugo, Brandon, Brandoff, Chavita Maldonado, Josh Dexter, Dicky Island, Aisha Ali, Ed Anaya, Caracalo, uh, Hector Parra, TKO Deli. Hey, bring me a fucking sandwich from TKO Deli, bro. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. Liquor Store Mike, sorry about your Dodgers. Sonia Baca, sorry about Liquor Store Mike's Dodgers. <laughs> Little Rob, Denise Moreno, Antonio Brito. Last page. Only 20 minutes into Angel the fucking episode. Fish, Hernandez, Still Scott reading now. Steve, Steve Champ. Are we doing both of this? Let's oh, do it shit. together. All right. <laughs> and Lo Lozano. Jeff Oscar. Lozano, bro. Remember him? We love you. Remember him? Mm. We still fuck with him or no? I didn't. We all have to. Jeff Lozano? We have to spark yeah, something. Whatever. He was at the golf tournament. Good dude. He mm-hmm. lives in Utah now or something, right? Might as well, bro. Okay. She. El Oscar Kimo Cantaran. Fernando, Fernando El Doyer. Sorry, sorry about your Dodgers, bro. <laughs> Ranting with Ramos. Conspiracy, 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 conspiracy. Theory, 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 theory. Big up to Ranting with Ramos, yeah. suffering an enormous loss. Can't uh, even imagine. I, I, I can't even imagine. There are no words to describe what he must be going through. Just know we've 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 uh, put out the uh, GoFundMe. Yep. But right now, let's do this, Justin. We you down to put some money in? Throw a little sh- some shekels his way, bro. I'm shekels. down to throw some shekels his way. Let's, do it. Let's go ahead, just the, the foundation and and fucking powder donut over here. Maybe we'll go throw <laughs> some money his way to to make make this transition a little bit more fucking digestible, bro. I could yeah, not even imagine suffering the loss of a loved no. one like that. Conspiracy, 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 conspiracy. Go ahead. Alex, Samantha Reina, Paul Costello, Jay Escobar, David. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. All right. There you <laughs> go. Lieutenant David Hoyos, the third. No, David Hoyos is the second highest ranking second Mexican high. in Chula Vista. Okay. First in my heart. Gustavo Gonzalez Jr., was Jason Holler, and Daniel Gustavo Rodriguez. Gustavo Gonzalez was very upset yesterday. We had our, mem- our monthly mm. foundation members meeting. Mm-hmm. Okay? And let me tell you, I was here. Let me tell you. Gus was here. Let me tell you. Poofy hair Cacahuates was here. Mm. Hey. Let me tell you. 
Israel, a stand-up young man from AARP who we're going to be working with moving forward. Hey, AARP, <laughs> this one's for you. We got. <laughs> Tell the A on your hat stands for. A on my yeah. hat stands for. <laughs> brand new branding. We got to sit down and talk about this this meeting that everybody missed. It's not for right now. This fucking guy finally makes a meeting and now he's calling everybody out. It's it's not, you know, it's not a discussion that we need to have right now, but it's a discussion that we're going to have right now. That's like when he goes on a bike ride and all of a sudden, where are you, you motherfuckers at? Just know. Uh Just know. This guy's upset right now. El el boof. The guy without a joint. As you were. Oliver Whitney, Christian Moreno, Rodrigo, Fernanda Javier. Try that again. Try that again. Try that again. Rodrigo. All right, okay. oh, there it is. Fernanda Gisbera, I love you. Amy, uh-huh. Ernesto Moreno, Prius makes me puke. That's Ben, I like you. Maybe cool hat, fucking cool guy. Uh, Junior Sierra, at Gavin. Why he's is he at nerd. Gavin now? Because he's white. Oh, okay. I'm just like, hey, God. at. Like, like as a print symbol. Uh, Tom this Phillips, Veronica Rocha. Don't you ever disrespect prints like that again. John though. Gennaro, Cesar Torres, that's this guy. Ruben Lopez. <gasps> Wait, there's more. Is there more? That's enough, bro. I don't honestly I think I might be with Chef. We're only 15 <laughs> minutes into this episode and we're still fucking reading names. There's no better time right now than the, any other fucking time in the world of history of things than to do this then. Uh <laughs> My Grito Weekly brought to you by Grito Industries, a label that allegedly pays us. Allegedly. Allegedly. Another one. They bring us a weekly update of all things going on on the label, brought to you by Oscar and the homie Rob. Um, I need another chain. I need more shirts. Send all the merch down. Big and I'll hats. keep, and I'll keep dancing. Hats. I'll dance. You just got to give me shit. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, hey, it's that time of year again. My Grito Fest happening Saturday, December 3rd at Border X Brewing uh, in Bell. Join My Grito as we celebrate our annual music fest with live music, drinks, and food, and good vibes. Drinks and food would have been enough. Good vibes seals the deal for me. I mean, I'm in. You know, if there's no good vibes, I don't know if I can fucking roll. Wow, Want vibes. to know who's playing this year? <laughs> find out this Wednesday, November 9th at 10 a.m. Follow My Grito on Instagram for updates and be the first to find out. Don't forget to grab your My Grito t-shirts available now. Really? Send them my fucking way, bro. Just send me the shirts. I need we gotta f- go grab them. I need a medium for fucking BJ, a yeah. triple X for this fucking guy, and a nice XL for me. Make it nice and new. Uh, we prefer plus size and models. Pick up records from Paranoias, Las Calacas, Adrian Carmine, 3LH, Maria Sanchez. Head on over to mygrito.net and follow us on all the things. All right, this is where it gets fun because they tell me to stop reading, but they always send me more messages. <laughs> Hey, Steve, I hope you're well. Not sure if you're still on your family cruise. I believe so. Dot, dot, dot. If you are, once you return, we have one of our young and amazing artists we would like to in- you to interview on November 20th. It's a Sunday. Oh, okay. I'll this fucking DJ inter- Sunday? Yeah, I'm going to fucking interview somebody on a Sunday for you, bro. The day of the It's Lord. a Sunday, so not sure if that works for you, <laughs> but she's available after five. So let's recap. I'm going to interview somebody on a Sunday after five. <laughs> Good Bitch, luck. I'm like a gremlin. As soon as the sun goes down, any day, bro, I can't be on fucking the sunlight. I multiply. He's like you don't a want more than three year old man after sunlight. Yeah, you don't, just, you, you don't want on that. The couch. Her name is Maria Sanchez. <laughs> Maria Sanchez, I will gladly show up on Sunday after five. My grito, you better do the right thing and pay me. Let's go, guys. Wow. Yeah. You gonna be in? I got intense. How do we not get dropped by my grito yet? How does my grito put up with our shenanigans and everything? I know why. I know why. Because uh, the there's two far. plaques over there? Yeah, there's two plaques. We're the fucking best, though. Yeah, We're the fucking fucked best. <laughs> All right, let's go over some of these reports. Let's see, what do we got today? I we. Who's it to lead? Let's see, some reports going on. Uh, all right, let's go over some Grasshopper. Grasshopper, one of our major sponsors here mm. at the podcast. They do everything for us. We... They dot all the I's. They cross all the T's. This young man's going to spark up the Emo Brown pre-roll that's this available for you. For you. Guys. The pre roll is available at Grasshopper every day of the week. Every fucking day of the week. But on Tuesdays, you can get it at 30% off because on Tuesdays, it's called Toker Tuesday. That's today. Take your ass to Grasshopper. Do the right thing. Pretty soon, within the next month, we're going to be brewing the first ever Grasshopper beer called Grasshopped. No weed, THC, or anything is going to be in there. So relax, all of you. But good things are coming for them. Uh, And when you make it clack, do it respectfully. Don't break that shit. We learned that shit. Uh, We're better than that. Elwood, you know, a little late night happy hour. Best $5 old fashioned. I was there last night. Uh, How'd it go? It was fantastic. Who was there for you? Angel. Um... No. No, not Angel? Ah, oh, fuck. I forgot her name already. Well done. Lilia. That grasshopper yes. shit's yeah. good, huh? Yeah, yeah. Lilia, um, Lilia holds it. I'm not smoking, dog. Okay. UPS oh, is coming. That's right. What's wrong with you, dog? Oh, wait. The camera's things. not on me. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, UPS is the label that pays Look at this fucking. As soon as I put it on, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> never happened. Nice. Never happened. Uh, Five dollar old fashions, late night happy hour. Casas handles everything we do. Well, breaking news. Casas handles everything I do at the Elwood. Everything we do at Three Punk. Mm. Everything we do at Emo Brown. Mm. Every everything. Fucking guy, dog. That motherfucker is so deep in my pocket. He rubs one out for me on a weekly. Three Punk Ales. How much does that cost? World Cup is coming, guys. And you've been fucking with Three Punk Ales mm. for a while. You know exactly what that means. It's going to be a nonstop party for World Cup Seen from the, the fucking kickoff whistle to Mexico holds it down. What do we do for three, uh, World Cup at Three Punk Ales? We line up all of the flags of the participating countries on the rafters. Sports. As teams get eliminated... We start ripping the flags down in the most mm. disrespectful fashion, bro. We Ooh, step man, on them. Jesus we do it. No, we don't. We don't do any of that. But we do take ah. them down. We take down the flags, and it's a whole pedo. It's a whole scene. And everybody likes it. We have killer merch. Mm. We have killer merch for World Cup. Chicle's Chicle. already, he showed me a couple of them. So I'm like, I'm on board. We have killer beers. We have killer World Cup pint glasses. Actually, they're bigger than, they're like 20 ounce glasses. Shaped like the World Cup uh, trophy. And they're hefty. They're hefty. Okay. Come on in. You can buy that and get five dollar refills throughout the World Cup. Five dollar pints. What's the cheapest yeah. beer you guys sell at uh, Virgin? I'm not trying to be an asshole, just real. Uh, by the pint? Yeah, seven dollars. Six? Yeah, five dollars. Ooh, all right. That's what. That's, that's what steal. we don't. We don't make the things you like. We make the things you like better. But we also make the things you like. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you trying to convince yourself or somebody else? <laughs> so three punk ales, World Cup, your headquarters for all those things. Many of you have seen us post the the manic Hispanic beer. Mm. Manic Hispanic beer is going to get dropped at the brewery on Thursday. Four packs available for you, man. Mm. Ooh. 21st century, Vato Loco. That's a fucking... It, up, trust man? me, it's going to be awesome. We're also dropping Argyle, the Bouncing Souls beer. That's coming on Thursday as well. We can give a fuck, dog. This weekend, we're just going all out. I was just made aware that it's San Diego Beer Week, so I want to make sure that we do something beery, you know? Very nice. So we'll be releasing those two beers. <laughs> very nice. We're going to be doing those two beers. You four sure packs available for all of you. Beery yeah, yeah, good time. Dude, dude, I had to alter my humor, delivery around the kids. <laughs> a little bit. Not too much. Well, you went on a cruise and still abandoning your kids. Like, No, I didn't. That's, and we'll get into that. We'll get into that. <laughs> the fuck is Gus here? The fuck, dog? <laughs> Friday. Who's going to be at the brewery? I'll give you one hint. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Tribal Seeds is going to be at the brewery on Friday. They're not going to be playing, but maybe they'll do some karaoke. Maybe they'll do something exciting. We're going to be out Amen. there supporting one of the homies, Love Thy Neighbor, Ruben Torres. He's been on here. Ruben. His candle's connected with Ruben. Um, his charity's called Love Thy Neighbor. He's a fucking huge dude in the community, man. He kills it. It's somebody that we legitimately look up to. Uh, he is one of our mentors here at Emo Brown, the foundation. And everything we do is a connected dog, man. He's, he's top dog, but he's in a little need right now. So what we want to do is we want to bring Tribal Seeds out to the brewery. They're going to be making an appearance. We're going to be having them serve some beer. We're going to be drinking beer. We're going to just be doing all the good stuff. Friday from 5 to 10 p.m., every beer sold. One dollar of that beer goes directly to Love Thy Neighbor. Do your part. Support those who support you. Go out there to the brewery. Have a good time. Hey, hey. it's beer. It's fun. That's all I got. Damn, dude. I fucking feel like I was just reading some shit right there. You got anything at Virgin? too. What's that? Do you have anything at Virgin or not? I already did everything I yeah, needed to do. Yeah, look at mm. That's my guy. Dog. <laughs> Fuck him, dog. I'm with you. Fuck him. <laughs> this beer is brought to you by Burns. <laughs> <laughs> no, all my events are done already, man. Tom Ham's last night was the shit. That's my favorite event, Beer Week. Tom Ham's is the shit, bro. Yeah. Yeah. One of the chefs at Tom Ham's is a jiu-jitsu partitioner. One of the homies gets down. Chef Kovar. Oh, Crack that was my boy. That's yeah. who we partnered up with. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, Kyle's a good dude, man. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he bought me a couple shots. Nice. Yeah, we did a little tequila action. Tell us a little bit about, or, or, or are you going to get into Beer Week a little later? Not really. I mean, what's Beer Week all about? Why is it fucking relevant? Why is it important? It's not anymore. But what they like, beer? you know, it's they they celebrate the San Diego beer scene. They do the fucking Guild Fest this year. They did it uh, in where BJ's cousins live in Del Mar. Uh, mm, normally used to be at the Broadway. You pier. live closer to Del Mar than I do, fool. <laughs> Breaking news: He lives on Del Mar <laughs> Avenue, bro. <laughs> That's two blocks. I guess you haven't known. I do live pretty close to Del Mar. <laughs> Um, so then, well yeah, there's just there's just events, you know. Every every fucking bar, or restaurant, not us. Know, they do. Uh, you know, Elwood doesn't have takeover. Didn't Ben Hand do something this year? Uh, no, he brought he bought a lot of our beer. But once he didn't upon do a event. time, Beer Week was the shit. It was once upon a time. Beer Week was like a highly coveted event. You wanted to be poor at all these brew. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, at all these uh, bars. You wanted to do tap takeovers. Now I feel like it's lost its allure. It just it happens every day. Yeah. so it's not necessary now. Beer week, week in San Diego is basically Beer Week in San Diego every yeah. fucking day. Exactly. You know, I mean we're dropping beers left and right. We collab with a bunch we're of cool people, so it's like killing it. I'm all on board with it, but. Yeah. 
It doesn't. Again, I look forward to two events every year, and last night was my favorite one at Tom Ham's just because it's sick to watch, you know, the restaurant do pairings with all these different breweries. Like Fall and the Friendly did something together, which is sick. So, yeah. I mean, but... It's not the excitement it once was for me. Time for some... Ah, you don't want to skip you, BJ. What do you got? Yeah. What's I got coming? shows. I got a fuckload of shows right, this week. Slow down. Good Re- stuff. Relax. <laughs> Take a breath. <laughs> what shows do you have coming up that you want to promote? If Still you had, if you had one show that you wanted people to go out and see, which one is it this week? The Hills tonight? It would be tonight. Oh. Tonight? Okay, so go ahead. If this episode gets go. out early enough for you to make plans for tonight... Casas, will this tonight. episode be out today? This episode's already you out have a mic. live. I mean, you, technically, You yeah. have a mic, bro. You have a fucking mic. Nod yeah, your head on that mic. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> He's a camera too. Uh, yeah, so I'm playing at the Hills in La Mesa. First time, uh, eight to eleven. I want to make a good impression. The Hills in La Mesa. Yes, sir. Is that with Lauren Conrad? <laughs> That's where they filmed. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Let the rain fall down and wash it away. How did I know you were a Hills person? <laughs> I love oh, fucking Hills. Oh, oh yeah. Go ahead. But then also, yeah, I'll be playing Wednesday at Tipsy Crow. Friday at Helix corny. Brewing. Mm. Uh, Saturday and Sunday at Tipsy Crow. One and two p.m. Sounds so you, like a bunch of people that listen to corn and then punch holes in their Yeah, bro. Wall. Sounds like a bunch of people that stormed the Capitol and shit, bro. But good on you. The Hills tonight. Um, <laughs> do they have good food there? That's what I've heard. I've never been. So I'm very excited to go tonight. And I'm Which one's the Riviera you? Club? That's not the same place. Right across the street. Ooh, I'll be there. I'll all be right, at the Riv having a cocktail. Oh, my God. I'm going to have the second best old fashioned in all of San Diego. What's up, CC number What's one? What's up, CC number, number one? one. Best mm, meet the Chimande. Michelada. Best Michelada. Where is she? She should be here. Yeah, making Micheladas or old fashions. Collaborate. Let's address the Emo Brown Social Club. Okay. Merch. As many of you may have seen, there have been emails sent out. There's new merch coming. Mm -hmm. If you are a $25 donor, Mm. you have not only a long shirt sleeve t shirt, a long Mm. sleeve shirt t shirt that says Emo Brown Empire on it. That one? Oh, no. That's coming. It's coming your way. $10. That's what you get. Literacy is really important, buddy. $25. You get the same print in a hoodie. And you also get that. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. Actually, there's it. That's it. You're going to get these two shirts before the end of the year, ideally. Was you know, just to, uh, to appease the, the social club members who we couldn't function without. Or could we? Respectfully. Oh. Or could we? Here's the thing. Emo Brown, the podcast is brought to you by the social club members. Aww. Everybody involved in the social club in one way or another has helped us shape, That's create, us. form what we are all about. Enough to the point where we had to create a fucking president of the club. I'd have him come on here, but he's too short and the stand, would, it wouldn't do him justice. Eddie Mendoza, alias El Pablo Cacahuates. He is the social club president. He has been doing an adequate job. We're looking to replace him soon. But <laughs> that being... Oh, no. You're, no, you're doing enough. You're doing enough. <laughs> sit down, sit down. You're doing enough. Um, Election day. <laughs> he's a good advocate Thanks. for everything we do. We had, a, we had our monthly meeting yesterday where only Gus and myself showed up. Nobody else showed up. Just Gus and me. Gus and me. Nobody else. Just oh. Gus and me. So you make it to me. a meeting once and now we're going to hear about it for We were there at the meeting yesterday and we had a conversation about it and what we should be doing. So things we should be doing to involve the social club more, obviously, is more merch. More more merch, uh, more events. December tenth, December tenth. Chef Claudia, Erica the Breaker, mm. Mrs. Stoles. Anybody else in the crew? Those three ladies will be operating uh, and setting up our winter formal. Oh shit! Members only, casas. Do the right thing, fucker. Yeah. Members only. Would love to read the casas the god. December tenth here at headquarters, mm. Emo Brown. What's gonna happen? Well, the menu is awesome. I heard about it yesterday. Mm. Chef Claudia's throwing it down. Erica the Breaker's not involved, so don't worry. <laughs> stop by. She'll there's going to the be, be very good food. Uh, we're going to have music, entertainment. We're going to have possibly raffles where we give shit away. Uh, it's going to be a fun time. Again, members only. Do you want to be part of this? Get the link in the bio. Join the Patreon. There's two. $10, $25. Where does that money go? That money goes to help the overhead of the podcast. In addition, we funnel all the other stuff straight to the foundation. Mm. You know, We roughly make about $2,300. Roughly, you know, and that's the other thing that's going to be getting created soon. We're going to create a, a newsletter, and I think it's going to be monthly. I think a monthly newsletter is what's going to be beneficial. It's going to be very interactive where we reach out to our members, and it's not only going to be available to our members, but to anybody who subscribes to it. So Casa's homework assignment number one. Create that link, hey, put it on our email. Hey, you use the mic. Can you hear me? Oh, my. We I did got it. What about Clear. this shirt right here? Oh, we're, oh, we're gonna get to that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you've been talking to him too much. Put that shit put that shit on ice. Put that shit on ice because I'm gonna come back to that. I'm gonna put them. We gonna get there. Right, I need I need you to do a couple things on the emobrown.com. 
One, we're going to update the merch. Two, all the, the names that DB Styles put on a print of the businesses that are associated with us, we need to update that list. Yeah, with the, make, their, make it legible. Yeah, make it legible. Let's write it like a seven-year-old at least so we can at least see what businesses are supportive of us. Uh, number three, sign up for the Emo Brown newsletter. You don't have to be a member, but if you want to be a member, that's where you sign up. Mm. That's what the membership does. Our overhead here, how much do you think, Gus? Over under 10,000. Good Jillian. Under? Over under 5,000. All right, so it costs about five G's a month to operate what we do. Mm-hmm. And the social club helps significantly with that. Everything else is done by fundraising. Uh, J Clip hooking himself on the corner. Things like that. Caesar. I pay a lot doing, for yeah, that. Uh, doing OnlyFans, whatever he does. Only flans. Basically, we're all in this together, guys. We're all in this together. We need your support, and we in turn will be supporting. So come on, join the Patreon. A lot of good times. Right now, there's a coffee mug out there. There's going to be the long sleeve shirt, and there's going to be the hoodie. A lot of cool shit coming. Plus, we give you great content. Back to back years, baby. (laughs) That's right. That's right. (laughs) Reigning fucking champs. What's up? Which again, we couldn't do without them because I'm sure it was uh, me and JP voting 30 Uh, times a day that worked. Hey, you know what? I think I'm done. I I don't don't think I want to try to win it anymore. I want to give Voice of San Diego an opportunity. You retiring? Yeah. I think think we're done. I I, I think think we're trying to win shit, bro. We made a point. You had a good run. It was a great run. Where are my plaques? I demand my I think we're good, bro. I, I think we're good with two years, bro. Really? Look at God. I believe you have a button. You, just, you want God. Scott to be happy, God. huh? You have a button on that soundboard that God. says otherwise. We need another hey, one. To some, this means a lot. To me, you know what? That's what it's I do. There's a coaster to me, dog, because I pretty much coasted to victory. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Yes. All right, dog. I see those things, and, and uh, all I hear is another one. What's cracking, dog? <laughs> no, cierto. Emo Brown Social Club, thank you. Emo Brown Social Club, mm. one of you assholes decided to create a page, an Instagram page. <laughs> I'm assuming it's somebody in the fucking, in, 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 in our Patreon, in our Discord, all right? That's what I'm going to assume. Casas, hit me with that image. Look at you, fucking Sherlock uh, Holmes. That took you a long time to get that, huh? Laser Latino, as mentioned last week. That's not me on Instagram. It looks like so, someone trying to buy you a drink at like 1.30 in the morning. If somebody's out there friend requesting you and harassing you, asking you if you know fucking Mario Lopez, bro, if you know AC Slater, if you know any prominent people from Chula Vista, that ain't me. I don't know who it is, but just know right now. Laser Latino was me when I was younger, but Laser Latino, the Instagrammer, is not me. No. I will find out who the fuck it was, though. I have my suspicions. We're going to Liam Nilsson. I have shit. my suspicions. It might be Jay Peasy. It might be Maggie 1G. Nah, probably not. This, this person is clever, so we'll see who it is. Ooh, we're we're, we're about to figure that shit out. We're going to figure that shit out. That uh, eliminates oh, a lot of people, bro. huh? It eliminates a lot of people. Uh, that's what we have on Social Club. Also, yeah, I'm not Laser Latino. What do you got? Anything else before we jump into the Algo Bueno? <laughs> just, the nah. Laser Latino thing is a, a fucking stopper. I, just, we need those t-shirts. We really fucking do. I'd rock the shit out of that. <laughs> I'd rock the... Gus, right? That would be the end of me. <laughs> Well, I think it, like, what if I got my own? stomach tattoo? I think it's <laughs> hilarious that yesterday when we were in the meeting and we were in a FaceTime uh, with, with some of the hey ladies. Guys, there's a meeting last night. Steve <laughs> was here. Don't know if you've heard. You would have if you were here. Uh, but it, we were there. And then I said, hey, I'm not laser Latino on Instagram. What the fuck? I thought you were. And I was like, no. And that bummed me out. Who knows what Laser Latino is doing online? Now, nah, their jokes are a little too corny to be you. Like, yeah. I know right, you would good. put time into that shit. There'd be more shit talking. Algo bueno. Give it to me out. My algo bueno, fucking Halloween, man. I got to go trick-or-treating for like the first time with a walking child instead of a carrying child. Go ahead. Totally mm. different game. He went to the door, got all the candy, and then the next day I ate it all. So, wonderful. Nice. Weird. That's not what your notes say. Yeah. What's my note says? Algo bueno. BJ Barry just bera. Algo bueno. Woke up and I was white. Wow. That is algo bueno. Good Strong for you, fucker. Like <laughs> yeah, what about you? What's your What's algo bueno Apple? season? Apple has a weird translate on their fucking eye notes. <laughs> I hate you so much. Uh, you already covered it, but I wanted to say congrats to my best friend Cynthia on the birth of her child. Well done. Of course, they named you did him it, kids. the you whitest had intercourse thing. and you made a child. That's how they do. That. Well done. You made it. Um, yeah, I did give her shit though, because you know that's rude. You name him Hudson, like in a bag. Oh my god! Come so on, what's the last Cynthia? name? Fucking River, probably. I don't know. Hudson man. River. <laughs> Come on, Cynthia. I know a white guy named you, River, bro. Yeah, but you, I know you married a fucking a Jewish guy, and Kanye hates him right now. But come on, be get creative. Oh, gold, Hudson. gold. Uh, what's his last name? Goldman. Hudson yeah. Goldman. It's fucking that's practically a, LLC. You know, that's a that's, strong name, bro. Hudson Esquire. Goldman the third. Oof, Ooh. that's next level. <laughs> that's that third. That's CEO shit, bro. That's CEO shit. <laughs> All right, hey, congratulations, uh, Cynthia. Used to be our uh, tasty room manager at Three Point Gales when we needed a tasty room manager. We don't need one anymore. But when she was there, she excelled. She killed it. Congratulations on being a mom. 
Again. Again. Go yeah, ahead, again. bro. What else we got? Another right. one. Happy birthday to my little nephew, Nathan, man. I can't believe I have a fucking 15 and a 16-year-old. When the fuck did my... we turn into like a message board from AOL times about, hey, happy birthday to you. Hey, happy birthday to you. I like well, it. Look, I, like, I, I, like, I like the kids in my life. I don't abandon them on a ship. Oof. My um, algo bueno this week. <laughs> Abandoning kids on a ship. We went to uh, Disney Cruise. Disney Cruise. It was fun, bro. The algo bueno for me was it was an epic day. We left on thir- on Friday and we came back yesterday. So it's four days, four glorious days in a boat on a ship with my family and my loved ones and everybody who minds anything. Stone? Dude, it was awesome. So you get okay. So you get to the fucking cruise ship. Uh-huh. You go in through this all security check to get on board. Sale de San Diego. Okay, right. It's called the Disney Wonder. And if you've never been on a cruise ship. Step your game up. That shit's fucking awesome. Two. It's fucking nothing about that sounds appealing to be trapped on a fucking boat. Well, I mean, trapped, if, if, if that's the way you look at it. Mm-hmm. But guess what? All inclusive. So all the food you want, bro. All right? All the food. This is a different cruise. I guess this is obviously more family oriented. For sure. It's, it's family centered. The, the theme is Disney. It's a Disney fucking cruise. So it's like Disneyland in the ocean. It was awesome, though. Okay, so first off, big ups to my mom and my dad. They paid for the trip. I thought they were just taking the kids, which I was already lighting candles, having a good time. I was like, good. Take them, little fuck- <laughs> Take them fucking kids, bro. Put but the then, she's, then she hit me with like, oh, wait, we bought you guys, you and Crystal, a ticket. Like, All right, cool. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. We went. We had a good time. All you can eat. Not all you can drink. All the fun you can have. Look at that shit. Was Tell there any booze like on the cruise? All oh, that. It, all there was is booze. Look yeah. at these guys. Fucking a, bro. I don't know how I did it, but I made good looking kids, man. Did Look you at sing, that. Did you that, sing Disney songs and stuff? There was Disney songs. There was this. Mm. There was that. Oh. I saw that pinchy goofy. Yeah. So you know me. You know me. I like to dig a little deeper. So I, I oh, peeled back shit. the first layer and I started talking to the staff, the people who work there. Mm. I wanted to get like, what's you know, what's the process to get a job here? Like, how did you go? There was this one dude. Big ups to Apri. Apri from Indonesia. That was our guy. That was our waiter. He huge. He, Man. He, big big fan of him. He's, he killed yeah. it, bro. He's been trying to get on the Disney cruises since 2013, bro. Damn. Yeah, apparently. Is apparently. Like a process? Yes. There's over 100 countries uh, involved in, in, in the operation of a Disney cruise. Geography. You know, first, you need to know Sports. English. Two, you have to have a, a, a killer personality, a, a hard working attitude and mentality. Next time. Yeah, so sorry, BJ. Sorry, <laughs> Caesar. I'm Maybe out. next time. The people who work on there, bro, they're fucking awesome. They deal with a lot of, uh, I mean, respectfully, there was a lot of Karens. I'm looking at you. There was a lot of Karens <laughs> on the ship. There was a lot, of, like, a lot of, like, Yelper elite people on there, bro. You see Ellie and, and, and you hear them just talking and going, I was like, oh, man, I could never be that. Oh, and I'm just talking to our guy, Apri, and I was like, hey, what's up, Doug? He's like, you know what? Apri. I said, how long's your contract? He's like, my contract is six months. So I'm going to be out to sea for six months, holding it down, collecting checks, sending money back to my family. Think about it, dog. You're uprooted for six months. You're leaving your family. You know, well, I mean, you went on a cruise and left your family. Uh, so. They came with me. Uh, they came with me. Did you put them in a closet or we a put them? Th- so, <laughs> so for all the parents who are like me, who like to have a good time without your kids, <laughs> there was a club called the Oceaneers Club, and in this Oceaneer Clubs, I think at three hours at a time, you can check your kids in. Leave them there with people who are going to overlook them. They don't let them leave. So three hours for each parent? So you yeah. For six? No, no, no. <laughs> three hours total. So wifey and I and my parents were out there having Irish coffees. Bro, it was a good time. It was a fucking great time. That's I awesome, highly man. recommend all of you go. And, and if it's possible, go out and, and do it. sister and Sean went too? My sister, the Hell weatherman yeah. went. My little demon of a godson, Theo, was there. <laughs> my mom, my dad, all three of my little <laughs> demons demon. were there, bro. We, they, there was no Wi-Fi, so it was awesome. There, there was Wi-Fi, but it was spotty and sketchy. Like, yeah. I would get random texts on occasion, but I couldn't, I could read some emails. I couldn't respond to emails. Right. I couldn't do any posts. I couldn't do anything. As soon as we got back on Monday and it turned out, I was like, Just I was like, Inga madre. And, but uh, it, <laughs> Justin wants to know what that means. It, it, yeah, Inga, 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 Inga uh, For those people who don't, of the British background, Inga su is a loosely translated word. It's like, the fuck? You know, like it just, it just, it's a lot of, it's an all encompassing term. I almost feel like it means forget about it, you know? You did, you, you, you went after yep. it. Yo, Barry yeah. Jesbera, uh, are you coming to work today? Ingasu. That could mean no. Ingasu. Uh, yeah, I'm on my way. Ingasu. Do you want a fucking burrito? Like it just has a lot of different meanings. Ingasu. That's how you say it. Ingasu is like the Mexican, uh, forget about it. So is Asi de Pelao. Two you should update that Wikipedia page. You yeah. said you found nothing when you looked. Two, so I two feel like of you my favorite it. terms that I use are ingasu and así de pelao. You know, and those two pretty much mean the same shit. You know, Casas mm. is a paisa like me, dude. You guys are like entry level New Mexicans, but for me and New Mexicans. Casas, that that's that's how we converse. That's so how the we guy get that down. Loves the hills. I love the hills. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love the hills, bro. I heard one of them people got a podcast. I want to listen to it. Uh, we should yeah. be on it. Bro, it's awesome. We'll throw those plaques there. Maybe like so. This cruise was only four days, so it stopped uh, two days in the ocean and one day ported, docked in Ensenada. Whatever. This this trip was for the kids to experience what it's like to go on vacation. To go to Disneyland? We don't, we don't take them to Disneyland, bro. They don't deserve that shit. Fuck them kids. All right? They Jeez. don't deserve Aren't to go to Disneyland. that they're going to find out now? Hey, hold on. What's that voice you use right now? Go ahead. Use that voice again. Aren't, aren't you worried they're going to find out? Gossas Gossas after dark. Yeah, Gossas 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 As he's like rubbing himself, do you see that? My kids have no idea that wifey and me go to Disneyland, bro. We go to Disneyland and we leave these kids at school and my mom picks them up and holds them and then we come back like around six. Where were you? Oh, we had a meeting. We, we were at a meeting. Sorry, kids. You can't. You're not allowed to go. I'm wearing like a fucking Thor helmet, dog. <laughs> I'm wearing a pinchy a, a Thanos <laughs> glove with six a, Thanos gloves with the fucking pinchy <laughs> line in my hand. Fucking <laughs> left, evening left. They were fucking choodle. <laughs> Wifey came home with the my first trip to Disneyland button, dog. <laughs> Mom, where'd you get that? Shut up. Costco. <laughs> uh, no, so we docked in Ensenada and we had a great time, dog. So my algo bueno aside I bet from you dog. Uh, aside from hanging out with my family for four days, twenty four seven non-stop. We hung out in Ensenada for a couple hours. Bro, I went to visit some of the homie spots. We went to Wenlat. We went to Cerveceria Transpeninsular. We went to this uh, little marisco spot called Macucos. Not a paid ad. If you're in Ensenada, and if you want some fucking... Everywhere in Ensenada, you're going to have fresh mariscos. But if you're in Ensenada, and you want some killer mariscos, Macucos, bro. Macu bro, Macucos. they don't fuck around. Um, yeah, that's all I got for my algo bueno. Vacation with your kids. It's the best time ever. Vacation with your family. A family who travels together all stays together. Seven. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> mm. Another one. Ah, chale. What is our chale moment of the week? I already went over mine. The Go ahead. Beer week. I just Tell me more. Why, why is it a chale? I just don't get it. It's not a necessity anymore, man. There's too many breweries. All the bars are doing the same things. Like, just go out and just do what you do, man. What do you have to create an atmosphere which keeps people stressed and busy as shit? Just have the Tom one, Ham one because I want to drink tequila with Kyle again. What was the best year for you in Beer Week, San Diego Beer Week? Oh, wow. I don't it's know. got to be, be years ago, bro. Yeah, probably 10 years ago. Like the second year I got in when I kind of had my bearings underneath me and actually understood how to go about the process, you know, like back when you were drinking go, red wine, going to, every, <laughs> we don't talk about this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Like that's when like going to the guild fest was exciting. You know, I had an event at, you know, 20 different places and, you know, running the muck, running the streets. But yeah, I just, I don't get it. It's lost its allure. It's, it's lost really, its allure. It's like you said, it's, it's, it's a commonplace thing. Yeah. I think it's ran its course. Something. It's ran its course. Me being a business owner, I feel in the beer industry, I almost feel like I should be like, you know, pimping it and hyping it up more, but fine. Nah. Yeah. Male pito, wey. No, 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 This beer, however, Virgin Beer Company, this uh, pistol, the pistol pilsner, it's, it's, a, it's a tasty little beverage. Go ahead, hit me with your Charlie Mr. of the Week, Gossos BJ. Likes it. That's all that matters. He discovered it. A Charlie of the Week is fucking <laughs> playing gigs in the rain and having to deal with this fucking bullshit weather. When this storm do you play outside uh no wait but, wait wait. it rained while i was away uh it rained last night that's uh, right it's gonna be raining all day and into tomorrow they <laughs> that's say that's right motherfuckers as if, soon as i leave the waters come if you guys listen to wet weather report it's gonna rain for 40 days and 40 nights jesus damn bro <laughs> is that a is that a biblical term it might be i don't know oh, I don't nice. moses uh but yeah so i don't know like getting in and out of places is tough and especially like there's never any parking anywhere so you have to walk mm. with like all your I fucking like gear and shit like i have so many trash bags in my backpack just to fucking the guitar like, in the rain i don't know how they do it in seattle like no one can't you just stuff. like turn on your emergency your hazard lights and just post up anywhere Sometimes, but like when I play some places, I'm like, I'm not leaving my car like anywhere. This guy, Pablo Cacahuate is going to attest to what we're talking about. He works at UPS and I just saw a, a report that came out. Oh, shit. The big, oh, yeah. the big wigs from UPS just came. I can't yeah. be talking shit. Yeah. All right. I can't be talking shit. But yeah, so I, I was watching a video of a fucking delivery driver in Brooklyn, bro. A delivery driver in Brooklyn. And uh, if you've ever been out to New York or any of the boroughs in Brooklyn, the roads are narrow. It's rude to point. You know, it, it, in some it, cultures, it, it's rude to point. The, the roads are narrow. So it's hard for two-way traffic to come through. One of the fucking UPS trucks just posted up in the middle of the road and unloaded like an 80-piece delivery, a yeah. bulk stop, dog. And then he, he uh, somebody was waiting in the car, like, turned the camera back. And it was a long-ass line of cars, bro. And that shit happens downtown everywhere. Like, So I don't feel like being that guy most of the time. But having to walk in the rain with your shit is just like an extra level. Of Experian stuff. credit alert. My score just went up. Thank you, white people that just White people in. have entered the buildings so and the but credit it, report yeah, has increased. Yeah, if I can does. say that that's my chale, then that's you know a pretty good week for me still because that's not that bad. It is... <laughs> 
voting day, guys. Today is Tuesday, November 8th. Mm. It is voting day. It's not necessarily my chale moment of the week, but it's definitely a chale. Like, we've been an, not an intricate part of what's going on with Chula Vista government, but we Bro, played a role. We've on, been the face of it. Role, man. Casas, let's go over this. Over the last five months, three months, mm-hmm. five months? Five months. Let's say five months. Over the last five months, we have taken the time to interview every candidate that's going to be running for Chula Vista mayor. They all had their opportunity to come on the podcast, shoot their shot, make people in Chula Vista aware, uh, aware of what they're about. Right. We had John McCann. We had Amar Kampanijar. Ralph Wiggum. We have uh, Zanita. We had Pinchy Jill Galvez. Right. We had El Tio Rudy Ramirez. Rudy Ramirez, That's dog. Right, Rudy. I'm, I know some of us. Rudy Ramirez is down. I'm, I'm a big fan of him. We didn't have Spencer Cash. I don't know what happened Rudy's there. The the, he's the one that did not uh, get an opportunity to jump on. We had McCann the, was on, but you couldn't tell him. McCann was on. Nothing we writing. had Mary Salas, our current mayor, on. Yeah. You know, we've had uh, David Hoyos. And, and I'm bringing up all these other names because they're big advocates and they're big supporters of some of the mayoral candidates running. Daryl Roberts. Fire Department backs... Amar Kampanijar. Mm-hmm. Police department really backs uh, John McCann. Man. And then here we are in the middle, just kind of like, you know, shooting our shot, giving everyone an opportunity to yeah. come on. Whether we liked it or not, we played a fucking role in who is going to be mayor, for better or for worse. The puppet How's master that, that doesn't want to be mayor was you the know, one. Yeah. Sometimes I look at Don Corleone. <laughs> Sometimes I look at Don Corleone and I'm like... That's right. <laughs> we also held PolitiFest. PolitiFest right. was held here at headquarters. Sponsored by... AARP. Not yet, but coming soon. AARP. Big, that was a big meeting, Gus. I'm happy you showed up to the meeting yesterday. <laughs> we, spot, we held PolitiFest 2022 here. What was PolitiFest? After the primaries, the two candidates that made it out, Amar Kampanajar, John McCann, were here uh, via Voice of San Diego, and they held a roundtable where they had... Damn, that's the photo you chose of Emma? <laughs> Damn. That's fool. the one he always uses. I love it. That fool looks like he's on OnlyFans, and he's like, hey, la- hey no, what's that dude from uh, the Netflix <laughs> special? Like the Netflix like- special. The guy who was, like, uh, impersonating somebody. Oh, what was shit. that? That, that, fool looks that like- guy looks like he listens to Hoobas thing. Oh, man. Oh. His bow tie is blowing off. Not right quite now. Incubus, but just yeah. like... <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> level Incubus. And he cries when it rains. So, we held it here. Right. I mean, no, we, 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 we threw it the fuck down here. Well, yeah, we added a different curveball to it because this is my first political Sports. debate. You know, that was my first political debate. I've never been in a political debate. Nothing about me screams politics, but I'm older now. I have businesses in the community. I'm raising children here in the school district. Um, I have a fucking home here in Chula Vista. Right. So to an extent, it matters who is going to be running our city. And that was the main reason. That was the platform. That was a jump off on why we wanted to do this political thing. After a while, it got a little overboard. It got a little cheesy. It's like, okay, okay. So I'm glad it's done. My child is like, thank God it's over. But you gave you everyone know? an equal platform. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we will not be accused of like not providing everyone an equal platform to shoot their shot. Everybody had an opportunity to come here and yep. shoot their shot. Even the National City candidates. Yeah. National man. City you was here. Them, yeah. National City was here, and, and they, sh- they did their thing. They you know? held it down, yeah. In the last five months, we've been able... Look at that shit, bro. How awesome was that we did that here like you know when we started emo brown and we started fucking raiding tacos and and well best weed strains and the best beer and the best this we didn't think we we're going to be hosting politifest, politifest political debates here but that's where we are we didn't think we were going to be in conversations with uh legitimate fortune 500 companies and how they want to work with us and do projects but look here we are you know the one bad thing is that we had to work with somebody in the social club, Oscar Uribe. He had to fucking come in, <laughs> and he had to set up. He had to set up fans in the back. It took him like three weeks to set up a fan. One of them doesn't work. Um, turn in the key. We need that key back in the key box. Thank you. Um, but I mean, you know what? For every good, there's a bad, and that was the bad. But the good is now moving forward yeah, as God. we've he has we've, a family. <laughs> we've we've put our foothold. In, in, in politics in Chula, Vista, in Chula Vista, in the South Bay, in South San Diego, for better or for worse, that's where we are. What did that lead to? Nora Vargas. Nora Vargas is now. She she came on and she had an epic time. County Board Supervisor, first Latin right. woman to head up District 1. District 1, I don't know if you're the podcast. Please Consists of San Isidro, listen to that episode. Mario Logan, National City, Chula Vista, Bonita, like Imperial Beach. It's like 85% Mexicans. Yeah. So that being the case, she is the first Latina woman to represent District 1. Crazy that for me, that, that, that it blows my mind. I'm excited about the path that we're going in. Chale moment, get out there, do your vote. It all comes into comes to a finish today. It's all over. We're gonna see who's victorious. We're gonna see who's not victorious, and we're gonna see what kind of fucking fallout we get here at Evil Brown. <laughs> you think there'll be any fallout? Nah, nah, there shouldn't. I mean, be, listen, man. I mean, we, you you did nothing but provide a platform the way you've always done. It's not like you came out and 
threw our weight behind anybody Nada. because that's illegal. That's illegal. We are a foundation yeah, and we do not guys. throw our support behind any political candidate. Mm. But me as a person, I still don't say who I support. But Ooh. y'all motherfuckers know who I support. Gus uh, is wearing all the buttons, so we know. Oh, who he's Gus is wearing a Mar Campanajar for fucking president of <laughs> the Emo Brown Social Club. Sorry, Kaka Wat, this looks like you're getting your points today, bro. My Yahweh's. Let's get into the Yahweh's. Yeah, uh, man. Go ahead. Kid's getting sick, dog. I know you guys were on a boat, so you guys just. Getting- I probably have COVID right now. Natasha. I just stepped off a cruise ship for like from four days. Though. You tell me we shouldn't have made out. <laughs> I probably have COVID. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, dude. Natasha was sick all of last week, man. Missed a whole week of school. And like it, it hasn't been limited to her. Like I feel like, you know, people in my family, her friends from school, like everybody was getting sick, man. It's just been everywhere. And it's like that time of the year. And it's ridiculous, man. But we send them into these cesspools of other kids. Yeah. Like, what do we expect? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what do I'm we expect? You, yeah. I'm not, my kids have been sick many a time. I've been sick recently. I had, dude, I had a stomach virus that ran through me for two weeks. Pulsing like two weight. weeks, bro. Um, I lost some weight, but I found it since. So it's all good. Congratulations, we're back. Man. We're back to normal. Back, back at, uh, back at 210, feeling like a champion. Feels so good. What's your Yahweh what of the that? week, my friend? Uh, fucking. That's not what it's known to say. <laughs> it's, the holiday season is kind of a Yahweh. Not really like for me, but for people in general. I was looking around, and uh, I know you guys like to make your Yahwehs about the world usually. A lot of you does for sure. Well, so you, are I'm you trying you to be more wait. worldly with my Yahwehs. Are you going to get serious right now? No. Oh, but oh. the holiday season, like for a lot of people, is a lot of stress. <laughs> Uh, for me, I kind of like it, but I see Fernanda freak out a lot. Do you guys freak out about the holiday season? Like, from I feel like Halloween kicks it off, and then it's just three months of like people stressing the fuck out until the end of like or the middle of January. Listen, I work at UPS. There's no worse time in the world than working at UPS during the peak season. We go in early, we get out late. It's a lot of work. It's this and that, you know. And I want to take this opportunity right now to talk about UPS. UPS. 20 years. Thank you, Justin. Some of them dudes are here right now. So the, we got the, the UPS <laughs> oh, count that high me, media team. <laughs> they, 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 they are in town. For, um, they made the voyage oh. from Atlanta to uh, highlight stories of employees from UPS and what does UPS, what can Brown do for me? I know because you know, we know what what can Brown do for you, but sometimes as an employee, it's like, what can Brown do for me? And in this situation, uh, I started working at UPS and when we opened the businesses, when we opened the brewery, I needed a, a job that was going to bridge the gap. It was going to be a temporary job when I left like banking and finance to start my businesses. But as is life, businesses, opening businesses in Chula Vista took forever, dog. It was long. So it was a long voyage to get there. So UPS was fortunate. Enough, I was fortunate enough to grab a gig and, and bridge the gap from leaving my previous employer to starting with these guys. They were able to provide insurance and benefits to everything. So that's what UPS has done for me. It's, it's given me that like uh, safety net. So they sent these guys in from Atlanta, dog. And I'll, send, I'll put some pictures up on them. These guys are from Atlanta, and they're highlighting certain employees that, um, you know, have taken full advantage of the opportunities that are provided and allowed to you from UPS. UPS has made my life a lot easier. It provides flexibility. It, we, it provides we get it. You like UPS, bro. I know, bro. Look at, Who's got the check? Hey, bro, I feel Jesus, like I got to say all the UPS here right now because they're looking right at me. It's like, say the right thing, motherfucker. Say the right <laughs> they sent their barbershop quartet. <laughs> so, no, man, it, it, it's awesome. So, the UPS crew, yeah. they're, they're going to be they're gonna be going to all the spots that I already talked to them at UPS. Nice, uh, they're going to be, they came here to the headquarters. You know, fuck, I, I doubt they've ever been this close to Mexico. Yeah. Yeah, there they You've are. You've ever been to Mexico? Yeah. <laughs> the best tacos in the world. <laughs> <laughs> then they're going to <laughs> go visit at, at Three Punk, where I'm going to pretend to work at the brewery, and I'm going to pour a beer and be like, hey so guys, regular day. welcome to Three Punk Ale. <laughs> yeah. and Would you know, like one alcohol? <laughs> so yeah, it, it's exciting. I mean, it, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I've been uh, awarded a lot of opportunities with UPS. I saw and CBS 8 that you were a hardworking father. They said I was a hardworking father. Who, who might argue? Plaque. That who should be a two-time plaque. Who might argue with that? So yeah, yeah. That, that is that. My Yahweh of the week. Fuck, mm. dog. World Cup is here. Ew. World Cup and is it Qatar or is it Qatar? I need that. Yeah, that, we can that go back and forth of that. Qatar. You have a mic, it's dog. Qatar. 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 <laughs> Qatar. Yeah, World Cup in Qatar is going uh, to be awesome. No, it's no? not. I got a list of all of the things that you are allowed to do and not allowed to do in Jesus. World Cup 22. What fans can do in Qatar and what they can't. They can't yell puto. Whoa, dog. Do you want to get canceled, bro? Ooh, that's, that's horrible. Leave, leave him off. Now. Leave him off. Leave him off. Leave He's not to the white with that. Do a do a, do a kick alcohol and drugs. Despite common misconception, it is legal to consume alcohol if you are over the age of twenty one in Qatar. Mm. Fans can expect to be able to purchase alcohol in licensed bars or restaurants. What the fuck does that mean? You 
have to be uh, obviously 21 of years of older. It has to be after 6.30 p.m. Alcoholic drinks will not be available during the games or inside the st- uh, stadiums. You got to be like 50 miles away Outside from the fucking the matches, bro. You can be nowhere near the stadiums. That's so Absolutely weird. not. That's not allowed. Uh, mm-hmm. Despite some relaxation on the licensing and purchasing of alcohol, the actual laws themselves are expected to fucking stay in place. Drinking in public is strictly prohibited. It's a private consumption resulting in intoxication. It's going to be viewed as disturbing the peace, and you will be fucking in prison for three years. Oof. Three years. You want to drink in Qatar, bro? Three years in jail. Do some time. Dog, dude. I don't... Bro, I mean, I just feel like this has been one of the worst World Cups already. Like, all the scandal behind it, all the corruption behind it, the, you know, the fact that they couldn't play during a certain time and had to move everything and... Now all these rules? Cash rules everything around me, bro. Crave! Fucking FIFA is corrupt, and they go straight to whoever gets top dollar, I guess, Qatar. They moved fucking World Cup from the summer Insane. to the winter. And, and, and now it's a, it's a big issue in the in La Liga, in the Premier League. Like, everyone's complaining Buchonas. about Buchonas. We all know a Buchona. You know, these girls that dress all outlandish. Mm-hmm. They all look like Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Fans have been advised to dress moderately, modestly, oh, with shoulders covered, avoiding short skirts. Shorts or sleeveless tops are not recommended. Entry to some official buildings will be denied. If uh, blah, 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 if you're found to be shy of modesty standards, the authorities will be informed. Bro, you can't act like a hoe. You're gonna get you're gonna get yeah, fucking arrested. I'm not, I'm not going to Qatar. Medications are far away from medications. There. <laughs> I am not here to belittle your bipolar disease, whatever it is. Yeah, but friends traveling with medications are advised to contact Qatari Embassy. Many legal prescription drugs are banned in the Gulf states. This includes wow. antidepressants, Xanax, Valium. Drugs. I'm out. In some cases, those traveling with medications will need a doctor's report explaining the need for the medication. Damn. They're You're not fucking around. All visitors, How overwhelmed do you think the systems are going to be checking these things? Though? All visitors in Qatar are required to have health insurance. Bro, fucking half the U.S. can't go to fucking Qatar, <laughs> dog. I'm out. When we're out. <laughs> but fortunately, I work at UPS, where health oh, insurance is the bee's knees. <laughs> oh, here we go. Something for Casas. Uh-oh. Previous uh, one. <laughs> you can't discover the killers? What? <laughs> you know what, Casas? I'm going to leave you alone. I'm going to leave you alone on this one. Oh, Something for BJ. Previous World Cups and other football tournaments have been criticized for failing to handle poor fan behavior, with Qatar mm. keen to avoid this by exactly. enforcing their strict policies on obscenity. No punching women Swearing in the and lewd gestures are covered under the section, mm. with deportation and imprisonment likely. Wow. What does that mean? Any form of public intimacy, kissing, heterosexual, or homosexual can lead to arrest in Qatar. So if let's just what say both. Let's just say I'm with wifey and I'm, you know, like, hey, you know what? I'm happy we came to Qatar to have a good time. And we kiss. Imprisonment. You can't kiss your wife in Qatar, Do bro. They just, like smooches? No, hanging out like dog. No you can, let, let's say, Okay. Forget Middle Eastern state uh, countries and homosexuality and their views on that shit and their archaic views. Heterosexual couples are not allowed to show public display, displays of affection. Get out and vote, guys. Um, yeah, it doesn't count over there, dog. <laughs> well, it well, doesn't fans, happen here. Fans are advised to avoid shaking hands with Qatari women. This is a gesture what? that is interpreted as disrespectful and punishable by jail, sentence, or deportation. Strictly knuckles, dog. Oh, you, you got to give, you, you gotta give the, a lot of knucks. You got to give the people hey, up, the. Girl? You got to give the people like, sup, girl? How you doing? That's it, bro. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> that might be the same even that is a misdemeanor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh fuck, dog. Sorry, you almost had it, bro. Yeah, I really want to go to Qatar. Said no one fucking ever, bro. Yeah, bro I, do you think this will affect attendance, or do you think it's still gonna be crazy? People are nuts. You know who's going? Um, the homie, one of my top, uh, one of my best friends, Julio. Palacios. Oh, yeah. Julio's going to Qatar. He's going to be going to uh, the World Cup. I've seen them motherfucker in public. We've gone with him to, to Ireland. We've gone with him to watch a match in uh, Old Trafford. That motherfucker might not be coming back. Julio might not be coming back. He's a little hoe when he drinks and he's going to be outlandish. He's probably going to be being Big belligerent fan, yeah. and a, a degenerate. Fortunately, he's Mexican. He's not from the U.S., so he's not uh, ill representing us here in the States. But you know where you should <laughs> watch the World Cup? At three three punk tales. Tales. Rest assured, do you want to make out with your boyfriend, with your girlfriend, with the, wh- whoever with your the boyfriend's fuck you want to make girlfriend? out with? Come to Three Punk Ales. Have $5 pints. Do your, look at Casas. That's why you get paid the big bucks, bro. <laughs> That's why you get paid the big bucks. Come to World Cup. Uh, we'll have all of the things. Everything will be awesome. What else? Any of your always over here? For the Yahweh's now. That's, nah, that's nah, a pretty good Yahweh. That was yeah. a great Yahweh, great right? Yahweh. I know, I'm great. Guys, <laughs> we're going to take a break. We have a very special guest coming up for the questions of the week Ooh. portion. Michelle Guerrero, a.k.a. alias Mr. B. 
baby. You may have seen her world renowned art all over. Look at that. Yeah. Look at all that over the Look at this. Look at that. All over Southern California. All over the world. She's going to be up next. Looking at right she's going to. She's looking at the emo brown caricature. Uh-huh. She's like, I can't believe I'm beyond that. Podcast. She's like, Oh my god, what have I, what <laughs> what have my I done? come to? What, what have I done to be here? Yeah. <laughs> Can I get out of this? <laughs> Hang out for about five minutes if you're on the live. Uh, if you're out there listening to the podcast, we'll be back in two seconds. Bye. Bye. And we are back. Hey, dude, the UPS hey, dudes were here. That was kind of fucking overwhelming. That was a little scary. I feel like I had to be on my best behavior. They were quick, though, in and out. They were quick, uh, but they're still the eyes of the overlord, dog. So they, uh, they watch everything. I hid the joint. Did you hide the joint? <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. We have a very special guest with us today, ladies and gentlemen, the uber talented, world renowned from Border Town, USA, USA. San Diego, hey. Tijuana, Chula Vista, y todo el pedo. Mr. B, baby, welcome. Thank you very much. Oh, we're doing that? Oh, we're doing that? Oh, yeah, we're <laughs> Thank you very much for coming Production on. Production value. And we were, ta- we were talking before we, we, we started recording again that whenever, like, Chicle um, is praising somebody or is like, hey, bro, whatever you got to do to get this person on, do it. Or when Casas Casa, hits me yeah. up, hey, man, we got to get this person on. Let's make it happen. To me, it's just kind of like, oh, really? Al, Al Chile? Like, like that? So when they recommended and they made it happen, I was like, oh, man, I got nervous. I saw you come in when we were, when we were doing our, our bullshit earlier. And I was like, oh, man, like I got that cold feeling inside. Like, because oh, you get down. People, look at the reason I, I, I recognize your uh, first murals. Like I said, riding bicycles on Sundays here in South Bay, going up and down the, the expressway, going to IB. Like you have a mural right there, right by the uh, train, the, the train tracks. Then you also set up a mural out in Eastlake for Chula Vista Brewery. And I saw that one. I was like, oh, man. So it's like mo- most of the people that I have in one way or another, we're connected. Like I see everything that goes on. But I want you to tell your story. How did you start? Why did you start? Um, I mean, oh, okay. there it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I've been painting my whole life. It's always something I was drawn to. I feel like I was always like anxious and depressed like growing up. And so that's kind of why I like that was my escape. And so I never really thought that I could make a living off of it. But there was like I went through like a really dark time and I came out of it. And that's when um, like coming out of that. And so, I mean, to expand on that, it was an addiction that I overcame and um, that actually made me feel like I was like in a strange way that I was capable of like whatever I wanted because it was so hard to overcome that. And after that, um, I was like, you know what? I want to live my life like the way that I've always wanted to, but never thought that it was possible. And so I started to paint murals. And how I did that is I, um, I would just get wood panels at Home Depot and just like practice on them. And then I would start asking businesses, and that's kind of how it all started. So. How soon after you first yeah. started drawing did you realize, oh, man, I got a talent. I, I, I'm enjo- Not only am I enjoying this escape with what I'm doing, but I'm actually good at it. I, honestly, I don't think I was very good at it. I think I just like did it so often that eventually I became decent at it. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. I, I never really thought, like, wow. I'm, I feel like I remember my peers always being like a little bit... Um, like, I felt like they were a lot more talented than I was. So it wasn't something that I felt like I was exceptionally good at. It was just something I enjoyed doing. But everybody gave you the great reception and gave you the all the kudos. Like, hey, you get down. You, you know get what? down. Not originally, originally, I had a lot of people tell me. Like, I even had an art teacher tell me, like, hey, you're just like, it's just not for you. Like, things like oh, that. Oh, so, shit. But I just liked it. So I was Why? Like, really Why do motherfuckers do that, bro? It's profe. It, <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, uh, that's horrible. Does somebody call you irresponsible? But no. you know what? In, in, in some cases, that like... This is what fuels you to t- get over that hump sure. and to try to take it to the next level, you know? Like, in no way am, am, am I at your level with what you do. But when people shit on me and tell me, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that, it just says, you know what? Okay, I'm going to do it, and mm-hmm. I'm going to do it better than you've ever anticipated. Sure. To the point where the haters start coming back and be like, hey, de la rifas, bro, can I do this? I'm like, nah, <laughs> nah, I'm down. But that that is awesome. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. Tell me about the name, Mr. B, babe. So it's actually my initials, Michelle Ruby, and then... It's it's like always awkward thing talking about it, but I kept it because I like what it stands for. So uh, the B stands for brown because that's what my name used to be when I was married. But I kept it because the reason why I went with it was because it's like brown baby. So it stands for like 
you know, like who I am, my background, why I create the artwork, which is for my Latino community, essentially. So. Your artwork oozes with all the culture that we were raised with here in, in, in San Diego, in the border towns of Tijuana, here at Chula Vista. That plays a big role. I noticed that in some of the interviews that you've done that you say you use specific colors to kind of highlight and accentuate what it is you're trying to per portray in your artwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, all my artwork is, it's all inspired by my culture and uh, all the colors that I use, it's, honestly, is because I, it's, it's actually interesting because my artwork used to be really dark when I was like depressed and stuff. And I feel like, <laughs> like since I've got happier, like my artwork got happier too. And so all the colors I use are like, meant to make you happy that's like my goal <laughs> imagine having a fucking passion that you're killer at that you enjoy doing and it makes you happy and you make a living off of that shit man just imagine <laughs> i think that's like the dream that's like the goal sure of anybody you know but you're actually doing it you know mm -hmm. what are some of the opportunities that have been um presented to you simply by following your passion and killing at it i mean honestly it just So when I decided to do this and go all in, like originally I had been applying to government, like a government job because I wanted the security and I finally landed that job and it was a good paying job. But that was when I decided like I didn't want to do that because I wanted to, I didn't, I feel like life is about the journey. And so like if you're not enjoying what you're doing, then what is the point of life? Like people live their life like there's like some crazy end goal, but like what's the point? Like if you're not enjoying the- What are you going to do when you get there? Exactly. You know, it's like I, the fun is like stumbling, falling, getting back exactly. up, falling again, people mm -hmm. like helping you, people shitting on you. Mm -hmm. Like that's all, I feel like that's all what contributes to the end product, at least from the people I roll with and from my word read about you. What I read about you, what I've heard about, like your history and your story, which is fucking awesome, you know, and, and I don't want to do it any disjustice. So KPBS did a, a podcast with you, mm -hmm. but like last year, was it? I think and so. I think it's called yeah. Border Towns. Um, mm -hmm. Check that shit out. Ch check that out. Mm -hmm. If you get an opportunity, listen to the Mr. B Baby podcast on KPBS's Border Towns. They jump into everything, every little crevice of your life, like everything. Yeah, they got deep. They I got wasn't super, expecting that. They got <laughs> super deep, Whoa. you know? We don't do that here at Emo Brown Podcast. <laughs> We're going like, to ask you about burritos. You know, we, we like to swim on the surface, <laughs> but I really enjoyed your story to the point where I saw you. Like I said, I was like, oh, fuck, I know this person. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I, I know... I know your story. I know your struggle. I know your successes. I know what drives you. I know what motivates you. I know about Chucho. I know about Maria. Like, tell me about Chucho and Maria. So they're just characters that I paint, but Chucho is a piñata. And uh, basically the reason why I paint him is because piñatas were originally filled with seeds and like held over the garden and they were broken. So the seeds would spread and the plants would grow. And so I just resonated with the idea that like through brokenness comes growth. So I paint him Damn. as like a metaphor for that. So and I always deep. paint him with like little cracks with like little plantas growing out and stuff. And he just like reminds me that, you know, just to keep going. Basically. Bro, if this isn't going to be the most motivational episode no, we've ever fucking shit. done. Because it's never come back, bro. Yeah. You, will never, <laughs> you will never top this, bro. You have a mic. Say <laughs> way. No, it doesn't. <laughs> He finally gave it to BJ. He I discovered gave it, it to BJ. I think it's awesome because of, of all the the murals that you do, and, and Chucho is in a lot of the murals. Like he's he's like the centerpiece. He's a he's a mascota now. He's like a, a, a fl big plush doll. He's everything. I think it's rad. But he's like prominent feature in everything you do. And just listening to that podcast on KPBS, I was like, oh wow, There, that holds more than like a visual meaning. That's like a, an internalized experience. Uh, Things that you went through as a child, things that you went through, and just listening to your story about being in elementary school and being super shy, it, I, it resonates with me with one of my kids, you know. And I'm like, oh man, so I, I want to like always put him in different um, activities to see what is it that he's going to excel at. You know, my other kids excel at a lot of things that they do, but more and more, I'm a big believer in, in shit that I see. You know, so I'll see some shit, and then it means a lot to me. So if I'm going through something and I see different signs, like oh fuck, oh. This is something here is going to come to fruition because I'm really dwelling on this. You talking about your past and and uh, um, being shy and being in elementary school and people just kind of like people, teachers, not letting you speak Spanish, mm -hmm. you know, for one, you know, not letting. And that's, that was here in San Diego, in the school in here, Vista, yeah. in Chula Vista. Out of all places. Call them out. Who, what school was it? <laughs> so I, I, it was like 
for elementary school, my mom sent us to an Episcopalian like private school, and it was called St. John's. I don't think they're still. I don't think they're around. I anymore. don't doubt it. Shit, imagine yeah. telling kids sure. in Chula Vista they can't speak Spanish, and if you do, you're gonna be reprimanded for it. Yeah, you're gonna fucking get detention in a border town. Yeah, bro. In We're gonna Chula make, Vista. I don't want to hear from the white man right now, dog. You better fucking watch yourself, dog. You're you better, the you reason you, you, this. You better happened. watch yourself. What the fuck did I do? You better watch yourself, Barry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But imagine, if bro. You want to take your anger out on him? Imagine, free. imagine like trying to you trying to remove somebody's culture from them, dog. Like, no Spanish for you. You know? Oh, that would gut me. Thank God that doesn't happen anymore. Furthermore, like, they were trying to hold you back because you were shy and you wouldn't talk. And they thought that there was, like, something, there was an issue there. Yeah, I mean, well, them not letting me speak Spanish, which was my first language, was, like, probably, like, one of the main reasons I didn't want to talk. But also, I was just, like, insanely shy like i used to have crippling anxiety like i i would be the kid that was like in the corner like playing by themselves and i want i liked it that way and it, i didn't want to be around anyone but i feel like I'm, I'm still like that but at the same time like i've i've learned to like adapt and like be better in situations by putting myself in uncomfortable situations you so. use those uncomfortable situations and experience to catapult you into everything you're doing now like if you can look back be like Pfft. Jokes on you guys. Like, it didn't matter what you were trying to do. You were forced down, but you rose above. Mm -hmm. You know, to the point, like, you, you're you a renowned artist. All throughout the community, in the art world, all over the fucking globe. You know, you have opportunities now that you've created with the LA Rams. What's going on there? What happened there? Um, So, it's, actually, it's like a weird, like, full circle moment. So, I did a, a job for El Torito. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. restaurant. Yeah. And so apparently who who recommended me was the rams and so like the the restaurant was like oh well why don't we get the rams involved so then i did like a co collaboration between El, El Torito and the rams and then the rams uh hit me up separately and were like hey want to do a mural for us so hell yeah that's how that happened that's insane <laughs> imagine from chula vista now you're doing a, a mural for the rams good thing it was in the chargers well done <laughs> we don't fuck with them <laughs> well, the, the rams actually win championships <laughs> oh don't be like that dog why not I be like, like I've, no actually never mind go ahead oh no, no. When, when, when you say never mind that's when we want you yeah. to talk i felt it i felt it it was coming yeah how was it growing up in chula vista for you i liked growing up in mm -hmm. chula vista do you I still mean, reside here uh, Back and forth. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of LA living, but I, my family's here, so I'm always here. But my studio is in LA because I have a lot of work out there. So it's been like I hate it, but that's just the way it works. How do you that's manage fun commute? Yeah. <laughs> how do you, how do you manage time management between it, being a parent, operating your business, that's being an entrepreneur? Question. Like, how do you do that? Uh, it's really hard. I still haven't figured that out. It's something I'm working on actively all the time i mean i mean internally you probably prioritize it without even knowing you know it's like i need to do this but i have a child i need to do that mm -hmm. you know and it's like i can't take this job as much as i want to and how lucrative it is because i need i have my necessities and my priorities that i need to tend to For that's sure. hard you know and I, I roll with a lot of people who have that issue about time management you know because everyone here is busy we all have things but you are on that next level busy you know you are on that next level where you have created your own brand you are you are created your own small business mm -hmm. and you promote it nonstop. Mm -hmm. that must be difficult and does that trigger you in any way with your former anxious self do you still deal with some of those issues i mean of course i deal with it but honestly i'm just really happy to be like where i'm at like i never really thought that i would be here so i'm just grateful every day like i'm excited to wake up and do what i do so i don't i it works well for me. <laughs> for, furthermore, to prove that it's all about the journey. Because right. if you set out saying, you know what? I want to be this killer artist mm -hmm. that gets jobs at the, with the Rams, with mm -hmm. El Torito. I want to get a job with Sony. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to have all these jobs. It's probably going to be hard. It's probably going to be hard, one, to even like create that opportunity if you right. set it out. But I believe in vision board. You know, I believe in kind of like writing shit down on a little piece of paper, just kind of folding it and I'll be like, all right, not now, but later. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I go, all right, cool. You know, and I do that a lot. And I got to go to therapy. I keep saying that shit because I know I got <laughs> it's a, the fourth episode in a like, row. Like, I know I got a lot of internal it, it's issues. Not like, it's not like we had a therapist on that you could talk to. But you to. know what's awesome, Doug? <laughs> I feel like I connect a lot with her, but yeah. she, with, she actually like put it out there. I don't put it out there. I internalize it. And I blame our culture. 
I, I blame the well, culture yeah, that we were yeah. brought up in. It's like you don't the taboo subject. Yeah, you don't you don't put you don't air that out. No. Fuck no. For sure. Be a man. Tuck, Keep, tuck that that yeah. Keep that shit to your Keep that shit. That's exactly why I do what I do because my family was the exact same way. Like, oh, you're not depressed. Like they would never understand it. And so now they I want to talk esas about cosas. it. Yeah. So that's why I talk about it so much because I want people to like know that it's very it's a very common thing. But like people just. Like to talk about it. I think so. it's more common now because it's so prevalent. You know, I feel one a lot of negative things came from the pandemic, obviamente, and with COVID. And, but I feel like one thing that was positive that came to the forefront is the highlighting and the spotlighting of mental health issues. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to we got to take care of each other. We got to take care of ourselves. And if you do not take care of yourself, how do you? Ex it's the old adage, the old cliche. How do you expect to you know love someone if you don't love yourself? Uh -huh. How do you expect to take care of somebody if you don't take care of yourself? You know, and with the help of wifey and always like, don't be selfish. You're like, don't be selfish. Do you not care about us? You know, like take care of yourself and do this. Right. And I'm like, you know, but it means something. It's legit. And just to have somebody in your position that is an advocate for these things and pushing these things. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. That's, that's a huge spot. It's a lot of responsibility. Does that? And I mean, that's a lot of pressure. You know, like you, you are now like a voice. You are now like a persona. You are now somebody that people look to and where you started, that's a complete antithesis. That's a complete opposite of what you wanted. You don't want any attention. You didn't want anybody calling on you. You didn't want anybody even saying your name. You didn't want anybody asking you for anything. You would shut down. I had that a little bit. And I see it in some of my kids. I see that. I'm like, oh, man, he's got the same shit. But I think he might have it worse. Like, I used to have a shutdown. Like, Esteban, can you? I was like, hey, that's mother. No, and I would turn red. You know, I like, word I, again. Dude, I wouldn't cry. Like, I, my face would turn beet red. And now Oof. to this day, it's still like, if, if somebody puts me on the spot, like, I feel like it turns really red. Like, I'll just, mm. I'll light up, which is why I do, like, shit like this. I like to get in front of that situation. I don't want to be put on the spot. I want to create my you spot. Create and, that then, spot and then yeah. I get there and be like, ah, fuck you. You ain't going to get me now. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, alre I'm already here, you know? Mm. But knowing that that was a thing yeah. for everybody, and because everybody deals with it. I don't care how cool you think you are, Justin. I don't care how fucking cool you are. Oh, my mustache. Oh, look at my chain. <laughs> like, I don't care how cool you think you are. In reality, everybody deals with that. And it's just a matter of how you process it. And the guy in our group that's probably the most open about it. And, and, but you know what? <laughs> It's all on how these people process it. Sure. And I feel like we need to learn how to process it. And just watching somebody at Mr. B Baby's level process it is like, oh, fuck. That's all. Awesome. Listen to that podcast. Yeah, I mean, Listen to that podcast. I'm alluding a lot to it because that one of all the articles I was reading and all of the reels that were sent to me and, and just like a, a mini docs and just you talking. Like, I feel like that one really like cut the fluff. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you were ready for that when they when they probably came at you. I was surprised yeah. because I wasn't, like, when they approached me, they didn't make it out. They were just like, oh, we just want to ask you a little bit about your life. <laughs> but then they got really not a tired. little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that was not a little bit. Your autobiography. I, I'm okay with talking about, like, all the dark times because, I mean, ultimately, that's why I'm here. And I also feel like it's important to talk about it for people who feel like they're stuck and they're always going to be there. Like, that there's, like, that it's not, doesn't have to be that way, you know? You have a daughter. What does she view you as? She obviously views you as mom. She obviously, you know, but does she see you as the artist? Does she see you as the brand? Does she see you as the next level thing? I mean, I don't really know if she thinks I'm not cool or anything, but she, <laughs> she definitely knows all about my brand and um, is excited. Like, she even dressed up for uh, Halloween as Chucho. My oh, parents. no way. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's, how old's your daughter? Seven. Oh, yeah. perfect. So perfect it was age. super cute. <laughs> Barry Jesbera, let's get to those questions. Let's we got see. some. We, we got some questions of the week. Some for all of us. Some specifically for you. Okay, cool. So uh, we'll some of the. Uh, we don't know what these questions are. We'll start so, with some of the Discord <laughs> questions. We pre screened one. It's not coming. Don't worry about it. I won't do that to all us. Right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. But you know who you are, and uh, I'll answer you privately. <laughs> Uh, so this one comes from our boy Samson Simpson. He's actually a m multiple contributor today. Thank you. Um, first one, easy. We'll start the softball. Gushers. Or fruit roll-ups? Gushers or fruit roll-ups? Neither, fool. I don't think I've ever had either of those really? things. Really? Yeah. If you're starting to smoke a little bit more weed, you should try some fruit gushers. Roll fruit roll-ups, fruit roll-ups. Fuck. I mean, I think I probably had like the knockoff brands like the... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But like not the fun flavors one. Mine was like a fucking Wayawa or some shit. But you never had a gusher? <laughs> and it had all the little grainy shit in there. It's like, Bleh. No. I don't know what a gusher is, bro. Oh, gushers. Are... Anybody? Nobody? I, I've had them. Yeah, I, I love gushers. Neither, neither? You guys are like fucking both? No, what is, I mean, what is I, a gusher? If I had to pick one fruit roll-up. <sighs> what is a gusher? Yeah, the gusher is like a fruit roll-up, but let's like a ball. Keep it PG. With nah, pass. Juice inside. <laughs> pass on that. 
Yeah, if you oh, got like the my cotton wife, mouth, that's snack. the shit right there. You get the munchies and the cotton mouth, it knocks them both out. All right. Same. Yeah. Awesome yeah. question. Samsung. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, this one, we're upping the ante. This is still from Sansom Simpson. Morning quickie or night quickie? As it relates to brushing your teeth or yeah, I think what? so. What are you, I don't, I I don't guess, do anything quickly. So. Oh, man. I don't know, bro. Uh my wife and I were talking about this the other day. Oh, she's going to get butt hurt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Yeah, four episodes in a row. Oh, you, I fucking, you know, she never brings it up, so she might be behind listening. Um, nighttime, it's over, bro. Nighttime, it's, it's like game, set, and match. There's no time for fucking anything at night. Yeah. It's like by the time the kids are fed, homework, showered, teeth are brushed, put into pyjamas, put into bed, Read those fuckers a book. Tell them you love them. Give them a hug. It's like, hey, wait, no mom is. You're drained, bro. You know, wifey doesn't, uh, wifey takes the kids to school now and then I get out of work. So I'm going to go early morning quickies. I'm assuming we're talking about relationships with our ladies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> deep, deep conversations, but quick ones. Fuck. All right. Nah, yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah, dog. What yeah. about you? I don't know. It doesn't hold, bro. No. That doesn't I'm mean, a virgin male forsaken. It doesn't pinchy ho. The only thing okay. virgin about you is your ear. No Q-tip has nah, ever touched that hole, bro. <laughs> fuck. Saving himself for Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. You know, fake news. <laughs> You don't have to answer. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> that's worse. Put him on the spot just a little bit. Uh, okay, <laughs> we're gonna pretend like, this, one. No yeah, yeah. this one could be for anybody. Hulk Hogan or Ultimate Warrior? Who are these people Jesus asking these fucking Christ. questions, that's bro? A terrible question. Ultimate Warrior. Ultimate. That's Ultimate the way to Warrior, go, bro. Yeah. I didn't know what drugs were when I was six or seven years old, but I knew Ultimate he Warrior. Was on something. Walking into the stage <laughs> and running, I was like, that fucker is on something. Yeah, Undertaker. I was okay. born during a Hulk Hogan Ultimate Take. Under, uh, Ultimate Take. You were probably conceived. You were probably conceived too. during oh, yeah, fucking yeah. at the parking lot. Yeah. A Monster Jam and then WrestleMania, bro. <laughs> and then fucking a Miracle Whip commercial. Like monster <laughs> in a wine glass. It's like. <laughs> What's next, bro? You got some lame questions. I thought they were going to be in-depth ones. This is our Discord. These are the people that want to know these burning questions. I mean, I tell them every week you could ask us whatever you want. Well done. This is what they well come done. up with. <laughs> this one's from at Gavin. Would you rather have... Hard pass already. <laughs> I already feel bad. Uh, would you rather have finger-sized nipples or nipple-sized fingers? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> a finger-sized nipple. That's why pre-screen one. A finger-sized... Like a bullet? Yeah. Well, Are we talking is about your the, nipple like a bullet? Well, let's like, talk if, about if this. It, if it was finger size, I think it would be like a bullet. Yeah, man. If, <laughs> which finger would you go with? <laughs> I, I don't know. Nah, nah. Would you rather like a thick thumb? I once knew a girl. No, man. I don't fucking so you'd go with nipple size fingers, though. Okay, for sure. Fuck. Yeah. Well, actually, I have a question for you. In your head, when you're oh, thinking shit. of things, I don't know. <laughs> when you're just kind of like, you know, you're just, oh, wow. You have a, a thing in your head, like a scene in your head or like an image in your head. Do you straight go to the, the, the art? materials and start drawing these things out yeah for sure. where do you get your motivation and your inspiration from i just i don't i just think of and things, said you? but like i think that the key to it is like to always like write it down or draw it like on the spot because if you don't then it's, it's gone just a it's lost like a dream idea. yeah exactly it's like a dream so, mm -hmm. it's funny because yeah the the dreams you have them and by the time you wake up and you try to like go over what happened it's gone bro it's gone, and I'm assuming that motivation, I mean, I'm not an artist. I don't have many talents. You guys, like, you have talent. Well, I don't want to look at you, but you have a talent. <laughs> Stand in the room. I think way. this guy might have a talent. That guy have a talent. Like, that is crazy. Like, I'm looking at one of the images that Casas drew up right now. Like, how does that even come to fruition? What kind of drugs are involved with that? That's it. That's <laughs> epic. Look at that. <laughs> are, are they for the, the drugs or the yeah. fuck of that? Both. Because that's insane. Like, it's very where the wild In my wildest there. dreams or imagination, nice. could I conjure up something like that and put it down? You know, like, it, it, it's always like, even I'll, I'll talk to Chicla about this too. I'll talk to some of the artist friends that we have. Like, how do you guys come up with these ideas and then manifest it from a thought onto a, a pad and then just create it? And then there it is. This is my artwork. Uh, I mean, it, yeah, I guess that's a good question. But I think it just is... I mean, it's all from an idea and then just like taking it from there. I think what makes it easy for me is that I have like a character like so it's like a foundation mm. that I can work on. And so it makes for me a little bit like my ideas come easier than somebody who doesn't have that, you know. So I always have like something like a starting point with my character. In the onset of your career, did you have a major influencer that that helped you kind of guide you like a teacher, a family member, somebody that legitimately watered your idea and, and helped it grow into what it is now? I mean, I definitely don't want to say like no, because I think that like my community has like really helped me get to like where I'm at, but there's not like one person that stands out. Um, but I definitely, I will say that like my family has been really um, helpful 
and they've believed in me and you know like helped me like when I need to help with my daughter and stuff and so that's what's like made it like made it possible for me to do it so I, I, I guess like I would give it to my family that that I mean you're fortunate mm-hmm. you're very lucky because I I know some people that don't have that support from right. their family it's like mm-hmm. hey, mama is like get a job do this do that and that, yeah. they quickly squash your passion they quickly mm-hmm. sp- uh, squash your 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 intent of taking your your dream to the next level right. so I mean oh yeah no that I would suck. Yeah, no. I mean my mom has like gone in waves where she's like like at first she was into it and then there's moments where she didn't believe it was gonna happen and then you know but how about all now all, all in all she's she's really excited for me and happy for for what I've created so it's cool <laughs> I had to save you, bro. Those questions were fucking garbage, bro. <laughs> Thank you, Samsung. <laughs> Samsung. <laughs> what else? Well, here's one. Right, I'll, right. I'll ask you one. Oh, okay, okay. About your, you know, what do you think are like the traits that are important in your line of work or just in the line of, you know, being self-employed or independent, like on your own? Like what are the traits that you think are going to get you through the hard times? Um, I think what's important is to be disciplined. Like that's the number one. I think like if you're if you really want to make something happen, like just focus on it and like be disciplined enough to do it every single day, even when you're not inspired or motivated, like you have to like kind of, it's like when you clock into work, you have to like show up for yourself. And even though it's like, there's nobody like expecting you, like you need to do that for yourself. So that's probably the best tip that I would get, that I would say. (laughs) We'll play this shit on repeat for like the next week. Cause this is the stuff I need to hear. Like if you understand exactly how her career started and, and everything that was thrown her way and just to where she is now, it would mean a lot more listening to that kind of answer. But that, I'll go that, back and check out yeah, that. Yeah, that, that is awesome. And homework assignment. Make mm-hmm. sure you guys listen to that thing because that they they did everything that I wish I could ever have done. But I would not have asked those questions. Those motherfuckers came out. They just said, "Hey, scandalous! What yeah. happened?" <laughs> well, no, they just dug deep. Bro. Oh, they 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 flipped over every rock and just kind of like had Mr. B Baby tell her story. Were you cool with that, or was it like, "What the fuck, dicks"? No, I was cool with it, but like I said, I, I wasn't expecting it. Mm-hmm. But I think that. I think it's important like and what like it's important to share our stories it is. Like, you know it is. like it's for everybody because you know it might help somebody so <laughs> and that's precisely why we wanted to bring her on here today she has a killer story she has a killer future what are your future plans what's on what's on the docket what's on the on deck circle what can we expect um like major big plans or like all right re- real she, you tell plans? me you tell me i guess like my major like out there goal is to create a theme park <laughs> well, oh shit, shit. <laughs> walt disney style that's the yeah i want to do like a latino um like walt disney thing <laughs> i look forward to being on your theme park cruise ship he won't take Definitely. his kids with him but he'll <laughs> build it in the warehouse let's go <laughs> hell yeah what are you doing like actively to get to that level right now so i mean right now it's <laughs> i'm just building my brand and that's kind of where i'm at but I've definitely started to think about like I've I've started to research like how all of that happens, how much money you need, all of all of you know those details. Um, but you know it's a long ways away. But it's definitely that's like what I really want to do. So I mean, and right now, like even with the mural thing, um, I'm going towards like the direction of doing a lot of like toys and stuff for kids. So I think just like more like kids i want like more representation like with the with latino kids that's, so that's important what I'm doing yeah that's important and you're doing a killer job putting culture on the map you know you. Uh, it, it's it's one way to do it like with food and music and movies but when you do it in art pieces when you do it in murals on the side of you know fortune 500 businesses big companies mm-hmm. reaching out to you that says something that says a lot that says everything you need to know about the kind of work that you're doing I look forward to getting to know you more. I look forward to getting to know your artwork more. I'm happy you got, gave us a moment to come down here and talk to us about everything you're doing. What do you got for Acasas? Any questions? Anything? Look at you. Like you just like, little shit eating grin. He's like, oh, look, I did it again. I brought somebody hey guys, who was awesome. Uh, I brought somebody who was awesome to the podcast. Look at me. Hey, Lister. Let's take a quick break. And then I want to have uh, Erica the Breaker and Justin come in and talk to us a little bit about something. Thank you very much for coming in, Mr. Thank B. Thank you. Hell yes. Hell yes. I get nervous, bro. When 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 I like legitimately am excited to talk to somebody. Like when Nora Vargas came in, I was fucking nervous. Yeah. You know, those those are like those are like public figures 
that are coming in to talk to us and kind of like share their story. So when Mr. B Baby came in mm. and, and learning the origin of the name and everything, yeah. I was like, oh, and just kind of like, you know, kind of, bitch, I searched. Bitch, I, I, I was I, I, I was digging. I, you, you know me, fool. I, I don't really like do a lot of uh, research on on people that come in. But when I started like peeling like a little bit of layers, I I, I kept peeling. Yeah. I kept looking. I kept searching, and I kept falling more and more deep into like wanting to know more. Yeah. I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm, sure. I'm a fan of, of her work. I'm a fan of her uh, of Miss B Baby's fucking path and journey. I love her vibe, to, to how she got to where she yeah. is now, bro. Yeah. You know that for me, it's that. And, and then she nailed it when she said, "It's not the end." Yeah. It's not the result. It's the it's the journey to get there. Cause not there's nobody who's gonna share the same journey. Yeah. You know, everybody's got a different one. Now let's talk about something lame. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, BJ, your shows. No, I'm just yeah, yeah. <laughs> come see me tonight at the uh, Hills La Mesa. <laughs> Erica the Breaker. Erica the Breaker comes here representing Chef Claudia. Chef Claudia's out there. What the fuck is Chef Claudia doing? That's more important than this today. She's- Cooking. Cooking. All right. Well, that wins. Uh, <laughs> what have you come to promote and to inform us upon? Her uh, tickets I'm, I'm for uh, this Saturday. You better come with it, bro. You've been talking about you want to start a podcast. You want to do with this. Your chest. You want to woo woo shit. Day it was. Saturday the Go 12th. Ahead. Go at ahead. Not the 10th. To 3. What's going on Saturday the 12th? At the mm. You, Steve, mm. have tickets. I do? To give away oh, fuck. to the Emo Brown members. It's uh, two VIP status tickets. You can breeze through the gates um, with early access, one hour early access. <laughs> um, okay, hold on, wait a Jesus second. fucking Christ. You I had one ready. shot. I wasn't ready. You had two hours to set up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Erica the Breaker, bro. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, well done. <laughs> uh, so there's a. Uh, Let me know if you want me to read it. Let me know if you want me to read it. You want to see it quietly. Oh, my God. <laughs> Not Start that. again. Uh, okay. Saturday, November 12th from 11 to 3 at the Embarcadero. Secure your VIP status to breeze through Festival Gates for one hour early access and head to the VIP tent for hours of music, live music, and exclusive tastings curated by the acclaimed chefs and luxury winemakers. The VIP experience is hosted by san diego's beloved tony gwynn family whoa well done to celebrate the legacy of tony gwynn i love me some tony there will be a custom signature wine <laughs> <laughs> shut up <sorry. laughs> vip guests oh unique my taste God. Scenes along with the guest experience from chef, tony gwynn somehow family. somehow <laughs> chef is gonna be mad at me <laughs> somehow, somehow chef is fault. gonna be mad at me for letting her read the fucking thing <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> Two VIP tickets for like Grand nothing. Fiesta Sunday, November 13th, 2022, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Liberty Station, Ingram Plaza. The festival weekend comes to a close with a celebration of the cuisine, wine, beer, spirits, and art from Latin America. All along the signature taco TKO competition. Ooh, there is a taco competition. This one is a completely different experience than the next one. So the November 12th one, the one that we just kind of begrudgingly trudged through mud and you great. got the it's message across. That is on Saturday, November 12th. Okay, that is the San Diego Wine and Food Festival. That's where fucking Casas is going to be. Casas is going to be over there, shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow, being a mañoso, sipping on grapes, munching on some (laughs) queso with some crackers, doing his thing, you know? Discovering people. Fuck, bro. He might be laser Latino. I don't even know. I think motherfucking he might be laser Latino, bro. So, man, to enter, to get tickets, two tickets. Sorry, I just commandeered this fucking shit. You know how I saved BJ earlier from asking those outlandish questions? questions you needed a little help so i decided to commandeer these came questions in, to enter in. to get two tickets for saturday november 12th for the san diego um the san diego wine and food festival and two vip tickets to the Grand fiesta sunday november 13th tickets that's that's two completely different events yes chef Claudia has provided two vip tickets for each event how do you get them Go to the Emo Brown Podcast Instagram account and comment with who you would like to take and why you should win. You must be following SD Bayfest and at the Emo Brown and Chef Claudia and comment by 12 noon on Wednesday, November 9th. Two winners will be chosen. Announced Wednesday at 8 p.m. That shit's close. It's coming up quick. Tickets are valued at over 11.50. Not 11.50. 1,150 fucking 
What? That's what I'm saying, dog. That's, that's what happens when you fucking Mount. we flex with fucking <laughs> Chef Claudia, bro. Yeah. yeah when yeah. Chef Claudia's here, she makes shit happen, bro. Sure. Except we're choosing people who are gonna read her fucking ads. If you want to purchase tickets, you can use the code Claudia for ten percent off of these tickets. Hell yeah, Erica can read the copy for me if you want. Okay, we went that route. You did great. You did awesome. You know, I just like busting your balls, it's Erica like the Breaker. Smoke that's going on in here. Mm, smells great. Who's smoking? I want tickets to this shit. <laughs> I don't have anything going on this weekend, and I just spent a family weekend for four days. I'd love to get some of these tickets. Chef Claudia, I will use Claudia and get 10% off. What do I do to get the other 90% off? I'm asking you right now. <laughs> Let's make that shit happen because I would like to take my beautiful wife mm. and get her faded and a ver qué pasa. Um, what, <laughs> 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 what else do you have to say about this event? Anything? Did she give you any insider info? No, that's it. Well done. All right, so I'll be posting this on Instagram, the photo, the the information, all of the thing. Um, excellent job, Erica the Breaker. You, you did it. You One for one. Justin Lifford the third. Oh shit! What do you got going on this weekend, bro? First and what the fuck am I doing? Mm. And what the I'm, I feel You're like I'm part of this. I feel like I'm gonna be, be part of the movement. Be moved on something here, bro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Give me a little, little more, little more volume, dog. Ooh. Turn my headphones up. He says. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, man. Well, look. It's good to be with y'all. Oh, shut the fuck I up! I love dog. y'all, motherfuckers. Let's go. So, um. This this coming Monday, man, I'm gonna be doing the solidarity journey. And solidarity journey. Solidarity walking, brother. Guess that's way. What is that? So solidarity journey is is um, an attempt to raise the issue around youth experiencing homelessness here in San Diego. Crazy dynamic. Um, we know that at the very least, uh, every night, 1,800 youngsters are on the streets. 1,800 youngsters classified as under 18, or what are the demographics of that? Minors, adolescents, and young adults up to 24 years of age. Oh. It's just, it's just How bad are we there. in San Diego as it relates to homelessness, bro? Oh, man. San Diego is bad as it relates to youth homelessness. San Diego is one of the top in the, in the nation, bro. It, it, it's, it's sad, bro. It's, it's all throughout all corners of our county. Um, you know, housing instability, young people not having the resources they need to, to, to be their best. And unfortunately, man, you know, most, most of these adults that we see on the streets, those specifically those experiencing chronic homelessness, you know, they're always out. Most of them experience housing instability and homelessness when they were youngsters as well, bro. So what I'm talking about is this ugly, ugly cycle. You know, we've seen it here at the Generational. warehouse. Generational. Yeah, we've seen it at the warehouse, man. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that we had a, we had a homeless encampment right up the street from us. They asked, they asked those community members to bounce, and now they're kind of spread out through our area. You know, and, and, and my view is fucked up because I, I just feel like we can, we can somehow come together with some better solutions, man. Let's get some of the smartest people together. Let's get some of those who want to share the resources, and let's take care of our, our community, man. So this walk is an attempt to do just that. Mm. So we're just trying to we're trying to go big with it, man. This is a YMCA, um, you know. So myself on the 14th of November, myself and David Baker, he's a social member. D-Bock. D-Bock. what's cracking? Debuck. So we'll be starting up in Long Beach, and then over the series of uh, five days, making our way down the coast, down here to, to Chula Vista, South Chula, where um, on the Friday the the 18th, I'm hoping to get all social club members, all homies, to kind of click up with us at Palomar Trolley Station. We're going to talk a little bit about this issue, and collectively, we're going to... Hold up. Cuando? Cuando? One day? Friday. This Friday? This Friday. At what time? No, no, no. It's like next Friday, dog. Not this Friday. The no, following Friday. Friday the 18th. Fuck at? 1 p.m., meet at Palomar Trolley Station. We doing this, Gus, or what? Gus is in. So we're doing this. All right. Bring, bring, your, bring your ladies, bring your kids. 1 p.m.? 1 p.m.? On a Friday. On a Friday. I can bring wifey. Kids are at school. Oh, okay. If I take them out of school, that leads to fucking homelessness. So we got to make sure we we avoid the pitfalls. We avoid the pitfalls. We got to make sure we avoid the pitfalls of creating further homelessness. So I got to let my children go to school, but I will bring wifey with me. I love it. But look, when you show up, kind of like last year, both you both both you guys came and met us up at East Street Trolley Station. Now we're at Palomar. After we get done having a little community conversation, we're all going to walk up to our, our Border View YMCA right there in South San Diego, right across the street from Hoppy Days, same campus as the middle school Montgomery. How many miles am I committing to here, bro? Let's get to the fucking nitty gritty. Uh, is this a Sunday bike ride or is this like... Uh, this, this is like a, a two and a half to three mile walk. Gus, we still in? Three miles. Three miles ain't right. jacked. Let it's- me take you back to a month ago when we were in Vegas. And we were, <laughs> and we were leaving uh, uh, the schnitzel restaurant, bro. I forget what it's called. And we were on a we were on a sick one, and I think I got heat stroke after half a mile. We're good. I got heat stroke after nine beers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I 
commit. I commit to November 18th at 1 p.m. to meeting you at Palomar Trolley Station to walk three miles in support and searching for a possible solution to youth Adolescent and children homelessness in San yes, Diego. Yes. More importantly, yes. we're raising awareness. Raising what awareness. What can we do from now until then to raise awareness on these things? I think the best thing we can collectively do, bro, is continue to amplify the content the YMCA has created on this issue. We've gone, you know, we created videos, we created all, uh, uh, websites with information. And we resources. fuck with the YMCA. They're, they're, they're good people, yeah. man. We do, we do, we, we with them. Yeah, I'm with them. All right, then. What do they, they, they sponsor the show? What's going on? <laughs> I mean, that's a good conversation to have for sure. Let's start it. Let's start it for right sure. now. For sure. Right now. <laughs> right now. I say yes. Uh, but yeah, man. So that's what it is. Just repost. You know, BJ, I'd love to have you there. I'd love to have you and your lady there and, and baby, right? And just kind of come and be a part of it. I, I even envision like a. Like DD Styles, dog, coming in this full Aztec dance troupe and walking with this dog. Ask him. I, I want to ask him, man. Yeah, for sure. For sure. DB Styles, David, Coach David. Coach. We implore you. We are pulling your card. Mm. You need to come out on the 18th of November next Friday at the trolley station of the Palomar stop at 1 p.m. And I want you out in your full gear, dog. Ooh, full gear. All dog. of it. Who else you want? We call him out right now. Mario Lopez. Mario, Mario Lopez. Lopez. I want Laser Latino. We Laser Latino. Laser Latino, Laser Latino and, uh, be there. and Droopy. Mm. We want both of you motherfuckers out there. I have a feeling it's the same person. Mm. Mm. I want both of you guys out there. They look alike. Next Friday. Let's do this thing. All of you guys. All of you guys. I want all of our members to be out there. Everyone's always talking about what can we do? How can we help? What's the next event? This is the fucking next event. This is it. The next event is November 18th at 1 p.m. at Pelamar. Oh, I work. We all work. All of us work. Yep. I'm working right now. He work hard. Every Friday. Next Friday, <laughs> November 18th at 1 p.m. At the Palomar Trolley Station, West Chula Vista, born and raised at Lolita. This is where I spend most of my- This is where we're going. We're going to go walk two to three miles. If we're lucky, Mm -hmm. Erica the Breaker will have learned how to read off of the fucking, (laughs) you know, description. There's no teleprompter. (laughs) No teleprompter. Take it easy. I'm excited, man. You know I'm down with you. I I fuck with everything you do. I know. Even though you didn't come to the meeting yesterday, I'm still down with you. Yeah, man. I hear you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but look, man, come on through. Thanks, I appreciate you hyping it up. Afterwards, we're gonna be at the board of you. Then we're gonna go across the street, talk to to Ben Damas. We're gonna have a couple beers to celebrate. We, we is in the collective that shows and rolls. Mm, I love it. That you're you're holding strong. You know, what? I, I, before we did finish, I wanted to go over this book that I, I'm in. I Fucking, I don't. I'm never shining you, my guy. I, love I, I fucks with you. Well done. Proud of you. This you've made a few appearances on the podcast now. Just on the side. Yeah, well, you know what? And today you gave me a reason to really to, to like, bring me on. Yeah, you know, it's like you know, so yeah, on the side. On Is this the first time, like, actually? Yes, yes. on camera with us. Yes. Yes. Look at. Can I, once Casa's done periqueando, maybe he can take you out there. there. <laughs> take, we'd like the camera on this young lady over here. There she He's is. over there updating his laser Latino profile. Let me give you a quick uh, resume as what the breaker has done. Erica the breaker has uh, managed to destroy a. Four foot bong, priceless. A four priceless. foot bong. She's she shattered it. It was a family heirloom. It was a family heirloom, and y- you shattered it. Well done. It was gonna uh, be a family. Heirloom. Erica the Breaker on multiple occasions has come to uh, the warehouse and has brought goodies. Snacks. In my opinion, they were the best. I call them Brady's. In my opinion, they were awesome. Chef Redomer had different ideas. You know, so I mean, that's how most of you people know Erica the Breaker. She is also the first lady of the social club, married to Pablo Cacahuates, Eddie Mendoza. Um, it was a good show. Everything was awesome. Before we wrap it up, I want to talk about this book. This book is called This Fool. And uh, The Educated Foos is, uh, no, what is it? Was it This Fool Educated? Fuck, I'm fucking up their Instagram name. But more importantly, more importantly, we are going to have them on the podcast. They are the authors of this book called This Fool, and we're going to go over an incredible masterpiece that has brought justice back to the sick, the streets of L.A., Seven Lessons for Burros and Bag Chasers. Okay, this is a great little handbook I'm going to start reading, and then we're going to give them an opportunity to come and talk about the, uh, the, the book and their journey and what they're all about. Nice. It's awesome, man. And you know what? Just slowly and steadily, we're, we're creeping into L.A., bro. You know what I'm Take saying? Over, Mr. B, baby. She she works a lot out of L.A. She LA yeah. You know the, these guys right here, man. Foo's gone educated. Go on their Instagram. Foo's gone educated, and let's learn about these guys. Mm. Let's learn about what we're doing next week, yeah. Jan, the, the 18th on a Friday. Let's learn about today going to the Hills Restaurant with you, Erica the Breakers events, the 12th and the 13th. That is this weekend. And there's another one coming up. Let's focus on these two because we mm. you've well, done enough. He needs to know about you've the one done that's enough. Coming up. Which one? 
December 10th. Oh, we're not there yet. Save oh. the date. December, November, always November 12th Start and November 13th. Girl. You Go. want tickets? Do you want tickets to these VIP events being attended and hosted by people that roll with Chef Claudia? Valued at over 11.50? Go on her Instagram, like them, comment on why you should do it or why you should be the recipient. And let's go. Casas, I think we can wrap this thing up, man. Wrap it up. Let's go, let's go, let's go.